Hey guys, this week's episode of The Read is brought to you by Form. Form wants to help you find the perfect solution for your curls, twists, coils, and tresses. And they've created the first women's prestige hair care collection that celebrates beauty in all its forms. So let Form take the guesswork out of your hair care routine with their personal regimens specifically designed for your hair care needs. Go to formbeauty.com slash the read right now to get 10% off your entire order. That's F-O-R-M beauty.com slash the read. Get personal with Form and let's move on. Today's episode is also being brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easy to turn your ideas into new and unique websites. No matter what your goal is, Squarespace provides you with the tools to get there all in just a few clicks. You can customize everything from look and feel to settings and products using beautiful templates created by world-class designers. So head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code READ to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And with that said, let's start the show. Fuck it, whatever. Uh, Hi, guys. I am Roseanne Barr. And I am Vi Lyles. This is The Read. It sure is. I tried to give Roseanne... Roseanne's theme song, It's Roses, this week. Mm -hmm. Which, sidebar, that's going to be a new segment for me coming soon. Giving things their roses? Yeah, things and people and places their roses while they're here. I'm all for that. Marla Gibbs deserves. We need to get on that. countless. (laughs) A-S-A-P. So many names. (laughs) Um, But yes, just that theme song. I don't remember where we were. What was the last show that we did? Uh, wasn't it a school, Ohio State? Yes. So we were there, and I was like, I woke up in the middle of the night in the hotel room, and Roseanne was on. And I just got, I think the theme song woke me up. And I did, like, a jig out of my sleep. And then I watched, like, three back-to-back episodes and was laughing. And that show was the blackest white show ever. I mean, yeah, they were genuine white trash. And it and was really it. good until they switched out the Beckys. And even then, it was still good until they won the lottery. And then it was awful. It's coming back. What? Yeah. No, it's not. It's coming back to ABC, I guess. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can handle 2017. Roseanne. The whole cast and everybody. No, original Becky or? I think it's original Becky. No, Shut up. Like everybody is going to. Okay. Show. I hope this does I not go like Full House. Like, the same night that I woke up to it, I Googled like to see if I could buy the theme song or some but shit. But didn't Dan die? Well, I guess that's non-canon because okay. Okay. Well, he was certainly part. at the All table right. reading okay. with everybody else. Okay. So <laughs> even little DJ, I yeah, figured that boy would have fucked himself up somehow. But oh wow, okay. I see. We'll see where things go. But see, the I thing about Full this. House, like I've said before, Full House is like of one of those like cheesy family yeah. young sitcoms that just I feel like it don't work. Yeah, no. There Today, was ever any real, never any real character development on Full House. You had to like, Ed, you, okay. If you grew up and watched Full House, you can't really like progress that show with the age of people that watched it. That sentence doesn't work, but you see what I'm saying. Yeah, I do. I've said this before, just like with That's So Raven and Raven's Home. Whereas this. I did catch an episode of Raven's Home and it is good. It is good. It is. But... That doesn't always work. Right. Roseanne, however, was trash like from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It was always, I don't see. Well, if Dan's alive, then that means anything could happen. Are they still broke? They should be. So is all the family coming back and like, are they all have kids now? Are Becky and Mark still together? I don't know. Is Darlene Dykin officially now? I don't know. Oh, God. Okay. I have to see it. I'm excited. Black Excellence this week. Um, first things first, we'll be giving points to a man named, two men, Sean Johnson and Brennan Jones from Philadelphia. So Brennan Jones was, uh, head of a movement, Mm -hmm. I'm calling it, called Haircuts for Homeless, for the homeless in Philadelphia. And he would basically go around 
as the name suggests, and give haircuts, clean uh, homeless people up and stuff like that, especially with the wintertime coming now, you know, things got a bit questionable in terms of how to keep that movement going. Right. Because it's Philadelphia. Right. So the winter is no, no, it's time. not a bitch. Right. To just no. be cutting on the street. <laughs> no. What do right. we do? Right. So Sean Johnson, uh, a fellow black king, uh, happened to own uh, a, a shop that was fully renovated, basically brand new barber shop. And gave it to Brennan for free. No, what? Took him to see, like, I want you to come see this building. Showed oh. it to him. Asked him, did he like it? He said yes. And he gave him the keys and said, it's yours. Shut up. So now the haircut for the homeless movement oh, can wow. keep going right under this shop that in Philly. That is so beautiful. I mean, just paint it forward. Okay. You know yes. what I'm saying? Looking out. So Sean Johnson has his own barbershop called Tapers, and it looks like he was planning on expanding it. That's a good and name. opening another, isn't it? <laughs> niggas love niggas really be coming up with great names. Tapers, especially is a great for, name barbershops. for barbershops. I don't know how that happens so like perfectly every time. Yes. But niggas can come up with names for a barbershop. They really can. That's a good one. Anyhow, so I guess he was going to open another location for this shop. And when he heard about this, he decided to. Give it to oh, how beautiful young brother so shout out to y'all making a difference doing great things in your community um, look at you finding positive representation about black men also I mean because let's not let's not <laughs> don't do it no no let's we not don't have to do it. that also uh, Tiffany Haddish will be the first black female comedian to host Saturday Yay. Night Live isn't that, that a is motherfucking <laughs> shame? That is crazy. Now, I just had to close it out with this because I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is a positive thing and go you, girl. You're having a fantastic year. Yeah. But what the black fuck? <laughs> After all, all these of years. The, Whoopi Goldberg has never hosted SNL? Really? In, in decades? Like, I actually had to look it up and just to be sure. I was like, this cannot be right. Like... That SNL is crazy. Is a, a comedy show. Like, comedians right. have been made through SNL. There are black comedians working there. I don't how, understand how you've never had one host. I just, Lauren, girl, what are you doing? How is that? So. <laughs> Great for Tiffany. Amazing for Tiffany. But how has her. SNL been on for, like, decades, 50 years? <laughs> decades. 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 Like so long. <laughs> Oh, God. Eddie Murphy was on fucking Saturday Night right, Live. Right, I just, that's, uh, I don't have the words for how awful that is. Either way, you know, I was really excited to watch this episode and get my life. Found out that Taylor Swift will be the musical <laughs> guest. <laughs> well, the Lord giveth and the Lord snatcheth. Right no, it's all about back. balance. <laughs> um, I can mute real fast is the thing. Right. I mean, so the thing is, if she's going to be doing musical performances and I don't have to see her pop up in any skits, because you never know. Like, they don't tell you. They oh, just be she probably... In. I bet she is going to be in skits. Though. I'm hoping that... Because usually, like, the host does the skits. Mm -hmm. oh, Sometimes, yeah, yeah. like, the musical performer will come in, but it's usually the host that pops into all of the skits and that's stuff. That's true. But you never know. Taylor may I try feel like to Taylor give, will like, insist. Fun, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Because that's part of her thing, pretending to be like a regular girl, I'm a just, cool girl. I'm, I'm just a else. normal girl. And I can laugh at Taylor Swift jokes too, you guys. Although you sue <laughs> blog. We'll get to that. <laughs> but anyways. Did you hear about? We'll talk about it. So <laughs> I'm going to just watch it. You know what I'm saying? Because, yeah, because I want to see Tiffany Haddish. do her thing. Right. And at the, you know, very least, if I have to reach for mute, it's right there. Multiple remotes. It's not a problem. I'm really proud of Tiffany Haddish, though, man. What a year. All right. So this week in um, Hot Tops and 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 I don't know. Hot Tops and the Breath of the Wild. That works for me. Okay. That Have you been playing still? I beat it. Uh, what? Finally. How? Okay. So the Electricity Divine Beast. How? You haven't beat him yet? No. I stopped. I said, fuck this game. And I That just was probably the hardest part I of any of the bosses. I hate it. I hate it so much. Oh I, thought that, I thought it was broken. No. <laughs> I, I, I thought that there was something. I was like, no, surely I got the wrong version of the game because this. Shooting at it to get impossible. inside of it was so hard. I thought that had to be the that whole thing. Horrible. I was like, well, that should just be. 
that should just be all of it. That should just be the whole the whole beast. But it wasn't. And I'm not going back inside. You have to like. I'm not fighting him no more. Mm-mm. No, no, no. I'm not going back and trying him no more. Because I know you got to pick up the little, you got to pick up the spikes with the magnesis and throw them at him. But I cannot do it's, that. Uh, it's about like speed and. He shocks me every time. Everybody's like, well, you bitch, you need to go buy the rubber outfit. But I don't even know where that's at. I didn't use a rubber outfit. See? And nobody on YouTube does either. They just do it. They, well, they make win. it look a lot easier than it is. Trash. Just have to keep going. Trash. I lost at least 50 times. No, I bought a bunch of Amiibos and I've been collecting my prizes every day. That's a trap. And yeah, it is. It's I have way too many. Of them. <laughs> I have Just so many Amiibos. You it's have the full. Guardian one? Yes. It gives you some good stuff. I have so many of them. Yeah. And bought even more of them because of Super Mario Odyssey. I have the Wolf Link. Oh, I have all the Odysseys. I have all of them in their wedding outfits. Which and is... a little Goomba. Ridiculous. It is. No, it is. Anyway, so... Mario looks fine in that dress, though. Oh, does that he? Bitch. Like, <laughs> like yes. with the veil and off the shoulder? Yes. I was like, Mario, absolutely. <laughs> you better, better cross-dress. Some... And if you fight Bowser in the dress, he tells you how cute your outfit is. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. He's like, you look good. <laughs> yes, he does. Well, this week on Hot Tops and the Breath of the Wild, then... Um... All right, so Drake... Apparently, Drake is working on being a film producer and is taking it quite seriously. Apparently, he's going to be working for six to six months to a year okay. on films. Um, sure. So he's working with Netflix right now to revive a series called Top Boy. It's not <laughs> what I thought it would I be. I was going to say, how excited hoped. are his fans right now? <laughs> I was hoping for something that I'm not getting, but... Either way, so Top um, Boy is actually a show, a British drama, crime, thriller, suspense. Yeah, that's what I'm show. saying. I always see it compared to The Wire. And when I watch like some clips and a trailer or two of it, I can see why. Yeah. It looks really good. Uh, so uh, I think that this it lasted like two seasons and ended in 2013. So they're going to be running the first two seasons through Netflix and then Drake through LeBron James's production oh, company, yeah. are going to be producing the third season. Uh, okay. Well, exclusively for Netflix. Sh- so he's super excited because it's one of his favorite shows, allegedly. And um, I know how Drake is about certain things from certain places. So, And I remember him tweeting about this show before, I think, or something like that. So I'm not really surprised by it, but that's fine. Whatever that. That, that's nice. I just saw him post something on Instagram that said Top Boy, and it was like a film, and I Googled it, and then he played I too much. was disappointed. Top Boy. Hmm. I was just like, really? I didn't see that for you. Thought it was like, going to be but, a different kind of movie. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> Either way, so that's something to be excited Thrilling. for if you're a Drake fan. I'm guessing this means like fall Drake is British Drake, and then winter Drake is probably like... Houston Drake and then spring Drake is like Jamaican Drake. Winter is a good time to be in Houston. And summer Drake is Toronto Drake. Um, you know what? I don't think I know the Drakes intimately enough to I'm guessing. That, but it just I'm probably wrong. He just I don't know. I I honestly thought that he was still being Jamaican. I didn't know he had switched out anything else. They're interchangeable for him. <laughs> he just kind of, you know, it depends on the hat he's wearing for that day. Um Apparently, the hoods of Toronto, where he's from, it's kind of like you don't really know what. Isn't is he going from the on. suburbs? I thought he was from like a sub development right. with like gated community I don't know type where of the situation. Fuck Drake is from, to be honest with you, I just know that they speak, and it's just kind of like Jamaican British, Canadian, Canadian. <laughs> yeah, just, okay. It's like their own dialect. Yep, absolutely. And I'm gonna let them have it. So exciting for you, Drake. And if the poor never comes, it's fine too, I guess. So is that all he's working on or is it just the top boy for Multiple Netflix? things, I guess, as of right now, he and uh, LeBron <coughs> are only ready to pronounce, to pronounce, to announce <laughs> that film series show. You so, really thought Top Boy was something else. <laughs> I'm just pissed. <laughs> so like, no nudes? Fine. Woo. Um Mariah Carey is being accused of sexual harassment after a former security company she was working with uh, is filing a lawsuit or preparing to file a lawsuit against her. Now, here's the thing. They're claiming multiple shits. 
Okay. First of all, they say that Michael Anello is the lawyer preparing this. So he says that they were promised 221 221,000. Oh, I was about to say I know $329.51 American cents that they did not get. They were also promised another two years of business, which would add to $511,000. Okay. They say that Mariah Carey multi- constantly humiliated them by referring to them as Nazis, skinheads, KKK members. And white supremacy. What? They're like, this is the head of the security company okay. that she's talking about. I'm so confused. Um, I don't know exactly why, but that is what he alleges. And also says that Mariah wanted to be surrounded with black guys, not white people. Where's the sexual harassment? We're getting to that. I was going to say, all I'm hearing is good sense. Right. <laughs> so then the lawsuit alleges that uh, once during a trip to Cabo San Lucas, Mariah asked this man, the owner, Mm -hmm. to come up to her room to move some luggage. And when he got upstairs, she was wearing a see-through negligee that was open. He says he tried to leave, but she insisted that he move the luggage, and he left the room. There was no physical contact. So I guess that is the sexual harassment. Now, here's my thing. Um... (laughs) Do you know who your client is? Right. Like, I'm like, have you ever seen Mariah's episode of Cribs? Do you this know is something she would do. Who she, that's exactly what the <laughs> fuck I said. She took a bubble bath right. on MTV Cribs. <laughs> like during the episode. She was the only one who got up out of her drawers right. and into the tub <laughs> with a champagne or some shit yeah. on national TV just because she's Mariah Carey. Right. Like, what? She if was you... really just posing up in that silk teddy and shit on TV like, and here's my room with the candy walls, and here's my elevator, and here are my titties. Like, th- that is Mariah. That what is... the fuck? Who do you, what? Do I'm you not... not know this woman? So did she, I'm sorry, did she make like a sexual advance toward him? Did she ask him to do something sexual? Was he it literally just what there. she was wearing? She was in her drawers and told him to move some bags and get his <laughs> ass out. And that's that. Bitch, duh, that's Mariah motherfucking Carrie. Like, Uh, if you go up there and you see her titties, bitch, then that's a story for your grandkids one day. And you go on about your fucking job. I just... mm, Because she didn't put them on your chin, then what the fuck is you talking about? You know what's really gross? This sounds like y'all trying to ride the wave of people accusing famous people of sexual harassment and throwing that in there, which is gross because there are a lot of like Real genuine actual. horror stories and you over here talking about well <laughs> Mariah had on some mission she insisted I move her and Louis bag. I bags. see her titties and she wanted me to move her uh, bags I, I just don't really I'm confused I'm trying to think what how would I feel if a man I worked for opened the door in see through clothing mm-hmm. and if he was the type like Mariah who frequently did things like that I would just try to avert my eyes, move the luggage as quickly as possible and go back down to my room because you, especially if you're not like trying to be inappropriate with me, then it's just like, you're the boss. This is what you have on. And I'm probably going to be more offended that you really called me up here to move your bags around than you having on, you know, a see-through outfit. But all right. And it I'm sounds going like, downstairs and I'm immediately going to call my best friend or aunt or somebody <laughs> and be, be like, like Bitch, so, can you believe? <laughs> I saw such and such as balls. Well, hmm, well hmm, that's only because I hmm, took my computer sure off of mute no, to try to play mm-hmm. the Roseanne theme song, that's and okay. I never got to put it back on. That's what that is. So if really, if Mariah didn't give them their money, then they just need to sue for their money. And exactly. Let that be that. <laughs> like, get your fucking money and stop trying to say, "Oh, well, this woman didn't want to have white people around because she don't trust them, or she preferred well, to have we'll black do. people." <laughs> Rather than white people. And she said that I look like a skinhead. I mean, look at him. Okay, so you kind of do look like a skinhead. But you deserve a work environment where you do not feel harassed in that way. So, I will say. I don't know you. It's wrong for Mariah to call these people KKK and skinhead and all. Because if you really felt that way about them, then don't hire them. Like, that's that. Okay, Fine, get your money, but don't try to turn it into something it's not because you see that's making the wave in the news, which is what this sounds like. So, well, 
Oh, I really only pulled this up because I wanted to hear what you had to say because I don't know who any of these people are. Okay, I'm excited. Um, so balls. Uh, uh-uh, I don't know balls. Either. Leangelo balls. <laughs> Oh, the ball family. The balls. <laughs> you know what? So this I don't know mess. who these people are. This is a mess. I always hear about this. You family, know about though. the big baller brand. No, I don't. These niggas who refuse. I know that people don't like the daddy. <laughs> yeah, because he's like, how do I explain? I thought this? they played football. I found people out that have they don't people today. have compared him to like he's like the Joe Jackson of basketball, to where he's like kind of insane and just insists that his sons won't, you know, sign deals with such and such. That's the whole thing with them. And the shoes is that like he has his own shoe and they're putting it out and it's like ridiculous. I think these shoes are like $500 a pair or something. Cr- right. The big baller brand. I don't know what the that The daddy means. is running the LeVar ball. He's running the brand and his sons play basketball. And it's the, it's the youngest one who got in trouble this week for going over to China and stealing some shit. Like he ain't a six foot six nigga. But this is a, I think he's the middle one. Cause I just looked this up. There's three of them. Lonzo is in the NBA. Right. This one's Lonzo name has is, the shoe. Okay. $500. <laughs> Lee Angelo. Yes, Lee Lord. Angelo. L-I. And LaMelo. Angelo and LaMelo. Mm-hmm. Sons of LaVar. <laughs> And Tina. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas Poor love doing that. white Tina was like, okay, sure. Leangelo too. All right. Uh, LaMelo, fine. Okay. <laughs> like, well, yeah, anyways. yeah. Okay. So, first of all, Lord. I had to look up all of the information about this. But I was, I was like least interested about the case and more interested in about like who these people are. This nigga is 18 years old. Yeah, I told you. He played, he just got to college. He just started playing college ball at UCLA. Six foot five. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Like 18 said, years. I'm carding every Oh, um, yeah. you got to be careful. One of these niggas. You this looks like a full careful. grown man. And that's why you're in jail now. <laughs> so apparently he was playing basketball in China mm-hmm, mm-hmm. against Georgia Tech. Now, why? Why? Why are? Why is the NCAA in China? I do not know the answer to that. I'm sure it has something to do with money, but I do not know why. Okay, so that's I don't the follow thing that, that NCAA basketball that closely. Oh my god! Well, there's those are those facts. Um, <laughs> so they got arrested for shoplifting out of a Louis Vuitton store next to their hotel. Next to their hotel. Please, Lord. this better be a misunderstanding. Um, they're Ooh. currently facing... This is Leangelo and two of his teammates. Jalen and so Cody. None of the other brothers are involved. But no. this one and his friends are facing three to ten years in prison, if convicted. Which is just so... In Chinese prison. It's just so... The thought is, you niggas, why... But, Why would y'all carry y'all's black asses all the way over to China to boost some shit out of Louis Vuitton? I don't understand it. You could do that in L.A. and not have to go to Chinese prison. But why does... But if your brother sells $500 shoes, he can't right, buy y'all you are a not, Louis Vuitton I mean, and he bill? plays in the NBA. Y'all are not broke by any stretch of I'm the confused. imagination. No. He's stealing for the fun of it, not because he can't afford it. And it don't make it no better for LeVar to be like, y'all making a big deal out of nothing. We'll take care of it. Everybody's acting like it's some big deal, but it's not. Like... Nigga. <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean right. Like, it's not my child facing I'm, exactly. three to ten I years in like... prison. <laughs> so, I'm just saying, North Korea just did this with a little white boy named Otto, and it did not end well. So right. if I was you, I wouldn't be so flippant about international authorities, you know, having my son. But okay, whatever you say. LeVar Ball, he's easy to dislike. He's easy to root against. So I think some of that kind of carries over to his kids. But just hopefully Angelo gets his shit together. You're too young to be fucking up like that. I mean, my God. You Nigga, look like what? a full grown man, but. Like oh, like them Chinese people wasn't going to have their eyes glued on y'all's black asses. That's what I don't large, get. black. You're a foot taller than everybody else. And you think they're not going to be watching your black ass. Tamar Braxton is opening up about her broken marriage Mm. with an iOS press release. Okay, so first of all, she filed for divorce after being married to Vincent Herbert for nine years. Her mother, Evie, told TMZ 
that um, if she could say anything to Vince at the moment, it would be to keep his hands off of her child wow. before someone gets killed. Uh, before he kills her, is what she says. Not simply threatening his life, which is what I would have been doing. Right, and Just right, for clarity. Right. Um, they asked, like, what if she decides to stay? And she said that he needs to go to counseling and that sort of thing. So she basically confirmed. There was some story not too long ago that he put hands on her and bit right. her finger and some shit like that. And I wanted to believe that that wasn't true and people were just making fun of the fact that he's large. Right. So I was like, oh, no. Why would homely-ass Vincent <laughs> ever in his life... Right. Treat a woman like that. Why, why that I... Yeah, it's like, I do not want to believe that of you, but look at these men. Every fucking hour is a new story about a man being a dickhead in one way or another, so. Well, this is what Tamar has to say about her uh, relationships. She said, thank God this is his purpose. Yes, I just dropped Bluebird of Happiness. And Tamar and Vince is coming back on Thursday. <laughs> but oh God, this has nothing to do with me or a job. Then a very long, long, long story about faith, hope, love, and why it just didn't work. Fast forward to... Um, love be getting y'all caught up. I decided I did not want to be married for the sake of saying so. I wanted to have a relationship. Someone to share my slash our dreams, our successes, our failures, our past, present, and future with, Mm-mm. and not finding out shit online. <laughs> Some of us have been living a lie. It's just... Yeah, girl, but I think you are the only one who believed the lie. I don't know that anybody else looked at you and Vince and thought, what a happy couple. When is enough enough? Is it okay that he checks up on you when his phone... So she put the S in parentheses. Mm -hmm. My thing is, you knew how to do that, but you don't know how to use punctuation marks where to use a space like this is my thing you know i'm i'm happy that you're getting out of a situation that is not fulfilling you or making you happy and right especially, especially if you're was, being abused right. and all of that kind of bullshit niggas you couldn't get somebody to just draft this for you like i can't first of all it's so lengthy and then on top of that it's, <laughs> it's just like shot. hard to look at this is bigger than tamar like what is up with y'all and these these the, the thesis that you put up on Instagram, like there's five oh, yes. spaces. Now I have to look at it here, and then some words just don't have any spaces in between them. And then like, wh- oh, I, look at the baby! My God, he looked just like Vince. So my thing is probably that Tamar like was laying down on the couch with the back of her hand on her forehead okay. and was just like, Logan, type this out for me, please. <laughs> and Logan typed this because otherwise I can't understand like why y'all get a PR person to type this stuff out for you. Uh, well, I mean, had, has she deleted it or is it not on her Instagram anymore? I'm, I'm not reading this from her Instagram anymore. I'm reading oh, a okay. screenshot. Okay, gotcha. So it really doesn't make it delete. Right. Nothing's deleted. <laughs> so, I mean, this is just what's taking place so far. Uh, Tamar... You and your bluebirds, hmm. I wish y'all nothing but happiness. And my thing is, this is the motherfuck why you need to be making peace and getting along with all 17 of them sisters. And you got a brother. Because right now, what, what should be happening, and y'all all got kids, so one of y'all niggas got a minivan. You should have all been packed into that <laughs> shit by now and whooping Vince's ass if it uh, hasn't happened already. There's no way I'm going to have five motherfucking sisters right. and a brother and want somebody's little bitch before Mm-mm. anything hits the ground. See? I'm hitting you. Bitch, right. we're all coming over. We ju- Vince would have absolutely got jumped. That makes Girl, me wonder dude. how long he's been acting like that. Like, how long has he been abusive towards her? How the much of it have old. they been? See? Like, rumors have been going on for a while. So maybe it could have been like Maybe her. she was sticking up for him yeah. for a while. Like, no, y'all don't act like that. Especially if you're not going to leave him. Then us going over there and running up on him is like... It's embarrassing. Like, flat <laughs> like, out. Like, why like, do we have to do this? It's embarrassing to even be placed in that type of a position and, and feel like, you know, you don't want to be the victim and all kinds of shit goes through. And then on top of this situation, like, you're married to this right. motherfucker. You have a kid that looks just like this nigga. It's complicated. Yeah. That's why... You have Family. all of them siblings. To be like, well, you... You can sit here with your you thoughts. You be complicated. <laughs> figure out exactly what it is you want to feel, and I'm teeing you. Right. In the meantime, 
<laughs> we going to go We're going fuck over there. That nigga <laughs> right. Up. That's very real. And I don't give a fuck what you said about me on the gram or on Twitter last week or who could sing the best and you won't buy my album or you didn't feel like this, you don't like my boyfriend or whatever. <laughs> we going to get over that shit. I'm putting that shit on the back burner right. today and I'm yes. going to cuss your ass about that shit right. at Christmas. <laughs> but as of right now, right. he gets his ass. We whooped. need to talk about you putting hands on my sister. Yes. I agree that that's the sort of situation you really do not know how you will react to being physically abused until it happens to you. So I'm not judging Tamar for, you know, her decisions and all that. If she's finally free from that situation, then amen and more power to her. Y'all still cannot pay me to be a fan of her music, but I do want her to be, you know, safe and happy. I mean, facts are facts. Right. We're real human beings. <laughs> right. You know, like I'm I'm not gonna act like all oh, I got. let me go and buy your music. No, now. no, no. Let's not be crazy. I'm let's just not a let's not be ridiculous here now. Um Speaking of shit marriages, Wendy Williams' husband is still walking around with that homegirl oh in my Jersey. God, of course he is. Of course he is, because what is Wendy going to do? I guess nothing. The fact that she is just letting this rock in front of all of us. Like, we all know now. Here's my thing. Why, like, how many... Why do niggas always get passes like this? Like, what does... Here's... Okay. I felt from the moment that she said, I'm sticking by my man. He's another one who has had years and years and years of stories about being horrible right, to his wife. Right, right, right. So, you sticking by your man. Saying that to me means that you've been aware of this and y'all have some sort of agreement or understanding or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, this couldn't have been shocking to you. Right. My whole thing is, what's his name? Kevin? I don't know what he does for money outside of his business with Wendy Williams. Mm -hmm. I think that he's like part owner or he has like a super high position in terms of her production company and all of her other little businesses. But he also manages her, right? I think so. So he gets 10% off top of all her deals. Either way, your business is your wife. Period. Right. So you being out here a, looking like a slaughter ass fool, right? Running around here it. with girls with rings on their finger and stuff affects her business. Mm-hmm. So does that not in turn affect you? Or are you already so rich because you could put ski hoes inside of a fucking seven hundred sixty thousand dollar house? So right. you super comfortable. You got like, plenty of money. You ain't worried about nothing. So you're not worried at all about the business. Like, I don't get it. You can stick by your man, but I feel like you also need to be telling that, look, clean it up. Right. Fix this shit. How you going to be out here really in public, nigga? The Washington Post could track you niggas for a year. Why is that? At no point did y'all notice who was the white man peeking in the mailbox. Like, they know which Grand Slam you had. They okay. know like if you had toast. <laughs> they know which JC Penny y'all niggas was yes, at. They and do. they got pictures of your mandals on and <laughs> her mail. Mandals. All kinds of shit. Why is Insanity. that? Clean it up. Right. And you would think a woman like Wendy Williams, the way she's presented herself for decades, again, in the public eye, you would think Wendy would be the last one to tolerate this kind of dumb shit, especially for all the work she got for everybody else's relationships and marriages and all this shit. So it's just so confusing that Wendy's like, uh, I know there's lots of evidence, but whatever, me and my man. You know why it doesn't surprise me? Why? Because Wendy Williams reminds me of a real housewife, but not Atlanta, Potomac, or any of the other colored ones. Okay. I'm talking about OC, Beverly Hills. Oh, no, Beverly Hills have... All of them. Mm. Like, she reminds me of them White House wives okay. with that same kind of drama. Them cheating ass husbands. <laughs> and then when Andy is like, so what the fuck is your problem? Why are you letting this nigga dog you out? <laughs> well, you know, we've just been together and nobody For understands so long, but us yeah. and the kids. And you know what? And I stick by him. And Beverly over there didn't, she didn't, you know, right. that's what it gives me. Right. Because she loves them shows. I'm just really tired of the story of the woman forgiving the man after years and years of being done wrong. And now finally he grows up and every Everybody's happily ever after. Like more stories of women cheating on their husbands and the husbands dealing with it and forgiving and all that shit. I'm going to tolerate you being out here with whichever hoe that's like 20 years younger than me Mm -hmm. in a house that I essentially paid for. Right. And just like it's no fucking problem. The least that you could do since the girls are coming here for me is do that shit with discretion, bitch. I mean, it's damn, 10 years worth of photos, nigga. <laughs> God damn. Why, am I, why do I have to go through this? Like, I'm the one holding you down. You have money and the ability to go around and flex with these girls now because of me. So just show me 
a little motherfucking respect. That's my thing about cheating. Don't be out here getting outside ass when I could be getting outside ass too. You know how many niggas and opportunities for sex I turn down every day being in a relationship with you and I could be out here fucking these niggas, but no, I thought we was in this thing together like with the fidelity bullshit. How come you can have extramarital ass and I can't? That's not fair. Tell me you cheating so I can go get some dick too, nigga. Equality. Um, That's it. So. Oh, Wendy. Sean Kingston, um, for whatever reason, was asked to sit in front of a microphone and talk about things in 2017. And. um, By whom? Who did this? BBC Radio. Oh, wow. X. One BBC Radio One. Okay. One. I don't. Know. Is it multiple ones? Or I don't. Just it's the just one? X. Okay. One, but I don't know if the X. Whatever. BBC. <laughs> and so, um, some dummy asked him, "Who is the most famous woman that he has ever adult wrestled with?" Uh, oh God! Really? You couldn't just say, adult said that. You couldn't just say have sex. <laughs> You could, adult Slept wrestled, with. right? <laughs> Even wrestle. snogged. I know that's British slang, right? For fucked, or maybe it's just kiss. I think snogging is kiss. Oh well, but don't call me. <laughs> I'm just saying, anything other than adult wrestling. How dumb do you sound? I mean, yeah, that's way worse. <laughs> like, so, are we five? So he says immediately, like without missing a beat, almost like he heard the question yesterday. <laughs> he says Serena Williams. Ugh. Well, you know, I guess it takes all kinds. Uh, but Serena might have a taste for Sean Kingston. She might. Then he went into like all of these moments talking about she's worth three hundred million dollars and uh, wear nothing but Nike track suits, and that he would pull out his card places and she would pat his hand away like I got it, <laughs> and he was like yes, yes, whatever. So I love that she's probably like y'all little baby money boy. Like, if you put that card up, please. <laughs> What do you, what is it you even do? Produce or something? Boy, stop, like, stop, like, stop, I'm stop, not stop. even sneezing at that. Stop this, right? Sean. I love that. What? I like, love that in a woman. <laughs> if you don't go and sit your ass down somewhere with this bullshit. So, okay. So let's say that Serena Williams did you the favor mm-hmm. of adult wrestling <laughs> with your black ass at some point in the past. Right. In the present she is fully engaged right. to some white man who I'm kind of seeing it for now. Like she posted a picture of him with the baby with the, the baby, other day, yeah. and, I and I was like, like "Okay, I can cute. see it. Yeah, I'm seeing where you were going with things. All right, okay. So that's a thing that's happening. She's a full mother, mm-hmm. obsessed with her baby. She says she's that mom who like is just obsessed and can't stop talking. I'm about loving her child. how much footage we're getting of this child, yeah. already, who's clearly ready to win anything. <laughs> Anything presented in front Olympia of her. Olympia is always looking around like, as soon as I can walk, it's right. game over. She really does look like that. Like, the moment as that I get up on these two feet. As soon as my grip is right. <laughs> you better be in fucking formation because let me tell you something. I'm coming for everything you have. Right. Um, I just don't understand why you feel comfortable or any of y'all niggas feel comfortable talking about some woman that you fucked Once upon a time. Why is this a question even being asked? And then why are you answering it? Exactly. Like, I I don't even understand why you would open your mouth and say some shit like that to somebody. But on the other hand, like radio stations, magazines and stuff, it's essentially their job to ask whatever. They don't even give a fuck about what you want to talk about or promote. That's true. They just want you to say the most outlandish, scandalous fucking thing Mm -hmm. that you could possibly say so that they can put it up on their social media and get a whole bunch Bunch of clicks clicks. and stuff to their publication or network or station or whatever. Which is why we so goddamn stingy with who we let come up here because we're not going to (laughs) pretend that we want to talk about some shit we don't want to fucking talk about. We're really bad at pretending to give a fuck about people. It is no fun for anybody. That Stevie J interview is always the proof the lesson is all I need we every time. Need it. Because both of us are like, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. But Chris sure, was like, he's y'all, be Stevie here. J is down the hall if y'all want him to come in real quick. We were like, like why not? Okay. Okay, like, Stevie J. And then look how that went. So But you need you know what? God lines those lessons up for yes, you. Yes, he does. He sent us that fly. early. Very early. Very early in the show. So we could be like, you know what we won't ever do again? This. I just don't know why this is 
a thing. That could have been a, a crisp and respectful, mature, no comments, no right. thanks, ill, like, what kind oh, of well, question Oh, well, I'm not going to talk about, you know, details or anything, but... You could have classed that right on up, but no, you could not <laughs> wait. It's like you were waiting for someone Somebody to, ask to ask you ask. something like that. <laughs> yes. So you could talk about the one time you may have had relations with Serena Williams. Right. Now, if you're one of these girls with a long weave on Instagram and they asked you who's the most famous nigga you fucked and you were like, oh, yeah, you know, me and... Waka Flocka or Dre <laughs> or such and such. Then it would be like, oh, these bop ass hoes need yep, to get jobs right. and y'all always thirsty for this. They're like, when women do this type of shit, they Which get I love. I love it. That Serena was like, clearly not enough money to take seriously, but I will fuck around for a little while, buy you dinner or whatever, get you some earrings that somebody is going to steal from you. Because when you said Sean Kingston, I thought you was about to say he had been robbed again because that is the only <laughs> That's time all I we ever hear about. Ever hear it's always name. bad news. <laughs> Every time. And this is not good news. It isn't. Sean Kingston running his damn mouth. Like, oh, I see why niggas be running up on you now. I get it now. Like what does so what Find does something this lead to, to do, Sean? Do you have anything to sell? With that lady this story? has a family and everything. Like leave her alone. <laughs> and you uh, know what the most is gonna happen out of this is that her husband is gonna make a joke before they go to bed, and she'll be like, "Shut your ass up and turn <laughs> yeah. over." And that is gonna be the end of he it. He's gonna be like Sean Kingston, though. Really, <laughs> you must be suicidal. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna clown the fuck out of her for a good week and that's the end of it she's gonna be like I swear to god I will take my baby I will if take you don't shut up this racket and beat her and nobody will miss you cause everybody loves me <laughs> woo if you don't go somewhere with this bullshit father oh All right. man next so I said I was never gonna talk about Tyrese on the show again but uh, well I'm not mad if we don't cause it's only gotten worse in the past couple weeks like much, much worse. Like, it rocketed into just... <laughs> the bottom fell out of this story like real quick. indescribable Holy, horror. It, was just not, it just went straight to hell. <laughs> to hell. <laughs> and every day it gets worse. Every, like, there isn't a day that goes by that it doesn't worsen. How is it that no one has changed his passwords yet? My Nobody? God! Nobody has access to his phone? So, I legitimately... I said that I'm done. I don't remember what happened right before that video of him crying, but I was pretty done then. And when I yeah. saw that video of him crying, I was instantly like, okay, this isn't funny anymore. This is really sad. Niggas felt very different. I didn't clearly. watch that. I've seen several parodies. I have seen niggas turn it into trap beats. <laughs> like I haven't even watched it. Clearly, I've seen them internet the fuck out of that video. Okay. That one alone. For me, it made me really sad and scared. Because... A, he's broken up about his kid. And B, he's having a legitimate breakdown on social media after he's been, like, leading up to this right. for weeks. Right. And he's just been allowed to get to this point. I mean, everybody saw this coming. There's no way you didn't see Tyrese having a breakdown on social media coming. So, so that was really sad um, and got me a little worried or whatever. But <sighs> more recently, he... He got on Instagram and said, first of all, he posted like a video or something. I guess he was on the phone with Jada Pinkett Smith. His phone said, actress Jada Pinkett Smith. Did see that? Why is her, why is her misspelled career title in her contact like, in your phone? What other Jada Pinkett what Smith? What other Jada, even if it was just Jada, I feel right. like I automatically would have thought Pink and Smith. So why? I mean unless you have Jada Kiss number two. Uh okay. Jada Kiss would not be <laughs> would not be two different oh, you know what? In Tyrese's phone, it, it probably is first name Jada, Jada last, last name Kiss. Kiss. You never <laughs> know. Rapper. I just talked about these niggas put words together and take them apart to their own. Why is that in there? And then why are you showing us that you're on the phone with Jada? So here's what he posted. He said that I'm actually not even going to read it because I'm tempted to do it in the voice and I really don't want to. Okay. So he said that he had gotten off the phone with them, that Will and Jada promised him or sent them $5 million dollars. To help keep us afloat. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. He said they asked him to get off and stay off <laughs> the internet now that his daughter's legal fees will be paid. And he said he will listen. He also agreed to 
You know what? I'll get to that in a second. Okay, okay. So that is what he posted, right? It's strange to me that you're saying that they offered you this money or sent you this money to stay off of the internet, and your response to that was to tell us. Right. Instantly. Before the phone call was even over. We had a screenshot. <laughs> I thought a condition of you getting this money was that you didn't, you wasn't supposed to talk about, like, Fight Club? Jada probably called him right back after she saw that shit and was like, all right, <laughs> so we just <laughs> talked about this. We just talked about this. <clears throat> So, Mess. there was a young boy by the name of, oh, fuck, I think I lost it. His name on um, on social media, I think, is Just Nah. But okay. his name is Naeem. And he has, like, a an Instagram page where he posted, like, this inspirational uh, video talking about... The black father and that we're so used to seeing broken relationships in the black household when it comes to father and son that we're, you know, basically making fun of this man and his struggle. Naeem, I think it's pronounced Naeem Hudson. So what he said was actually very true. And he looks to be, he's 11 years old. Oh, he's 11. Yes. (laughs) I thought you meant he was a young man for real, like 22. No, he's an 11 year old motivational speaker. Oh God. What? Motivation to do what? I don't know. <laughs> but like you're going in the right direction. But that's we're not there's making fun of Tyrese of because niggas don't have daddies. That's not why we're making no, fun of No, there's been a long thing leading up to this. But I mean, even I like when I saw that, yeah. that was the end for me. Okay. So I feel like the video that he posted or what he was saying in the video made a lot of sense to me. Okay. Tyrese posted it oh, no. on his page, giving loads of thanks, and offered to pay like a full ride for this boy to go to school like his like an entire scholarship for this boy to go to harvard what? i don't know if he said that harvard is a school he wants to go to or the he plans just to go like, to or whatever or if he just, i don't know where harvard came from okay um but he offered to pay for this to pay this boy's tuition it wasn't you just talking about how you needed money to stay afloat and your daughter's legal bills and all this other shit what how we get into paying for somebody else's key? He said once the Will Smith wire came through, oh that this God. is what he was going to do. Now, here's the fucking kicker. <laughs> now, a story hit uh, TMZ that Will and Jada never promised or sent him nobody's $5 million. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what they offered him instead was encouragement <laughs> and possibly <laughs> prayer yes. and advice to stay off of. Social, Social media, media, which is good advice for pretty much Solid every celebrity. Advice, it really is. Um, so I never believed that. Wait it, waiter. <laughs> I never believed that. I like that actually. I never thought waiter, waiter. was gonna send him five million dollars. I never did. I thought that was. I thought right. it to be odd. Yeah, I, I said five million is a hefty That's amount a to gl- just wire to a nigga that you know is not gonna give it I back. I mean, Girl Strip did well. Netflix just paid I mean, Will a whole lot of money. Certainly, They're they have it. Very, very rich. Not worried about that whether they but have it, but just are to they give going to, to a give nigga right. to get off of the internet. I'm like, damn, that is friendship. Right. A nigga who, being realistic about Tyrese, does not really have the earning capacity to give that back to you in a, in a reasonable amount of time. What is Tyrese going to be in? It would have had to have been off love. Right. I would have had right. to have right. been right. assumed right. to be right. alone right. of right. any kind. But it just never sounded right. It's, it didn't. Too it much sounded money. off. That's too much money. And, and for it to be like... You can only, we're only going to send it to you if you stay offline. She's kind of like, if it was real, you would happened. have stayed offline though. You wouldn't have, you would Maybe have to be a whole dumbass. You would have to be a whole dumbass. Maybe Jada was on the phone with you and saw you live streaming it at the same time. And then they changed their minds. If that's the case. Because I can't imagine how you got $5 million coming to you out of nowhere. Right. That, just, they're like, that. But Tyrese, though, is the thing. Every time that I, every time I run into a part of this story where I'm like, this doesn't make sense. I remember that it's a story about Tyrese, so it's not going to make sense in a lot of places. And this is just one of them. Like, I'm it, scared for him. It sounds totally unlikely that Will and Jada would have been like, sure, $5 million as long but as you don't nigga, do that on Instagram. You promised 
to pay an 11 year old kid to go to college she, uh, with money that you fuck? don't with have money that you don't have I like I there has to be some kind of miscommunication right there has to be because <laughs> Because now it's looking like, oh, well, sorry, I can't pay your tuition because Will and Jada pulled out of giving me my money. Like, hold on now. Nobody told you to promise money that you didn't have and evidently was never going to be sent to you to some child you don't even know. I'm not even trying to be funny. If that is the case, if they really never offered him no money, he needs whatever that is. fifty one fifty seventeen thirty eight. 1738 I don't care the, what it the is. The psycho? That, like, somebody needs to come and get him. Yeah. Yeah. No, they like, do. Maybe not like a white it's only jacket. Getting, I mean... Hell, maybe I don't. I don't know if that's like still how it goes no, down, just, but something. Somebody needs to come and just sit him down and be like, "Let us talk about everything that's going on in your head right, right now, right? Because you're literally going through a lot mm-hmm. outside of the social media antics and the fame, right? You're dealing with shit right now, financially, personally, with your right. family, all kinds of stuff, and you're reacting to it in a dangerous way, right? And all kinds of shit. Now, this kid could probably think he's going to go to. He won't have to worry about college <laughs> tuition. Yeah, because don't. he's gonna get money from what? Tyrese via Will and Jada, and that's not gonna happen. Like, I hope I hope that child's mama saw that Instagram comment and was like, "Okay, realistically, Tyrese is not finna pay your tuition." They Let's... reposted it on his page. No, his page already posted. Tyrese promises to pay motivational oh, speaker King no. Nah full oh, scholarship. Oh God. See, now K-I-N. Jada got to be the good guy and right. go pay this exactly. baby's tuition. Now they're going to have to pay this boy's <laughs> <laughs> like, That's what the fuck I said. I was like, now Will and Jada probably going to feel like they got to find this boy and be like, so look, we when don't you, know. When you get ready for college, let We don't even know. need to talk about that. And we'll put your tuition on a Visa but gift just, card. just here's everything you need. Just, you don't have to worry about it. Well, you so sorry pencils. for the confusion. Yeah, our... Are bad, I guess, for calling Tyrese. Like, sort of. Like, it just kind of seems like the only way you could have avoided this was by not being friends with Tyrese. Because <laughs> why would you pull my name into this? It just is so... It's the type of thing you do when you just start to meet celebrities and you're just like so geeked that you know famous people and there are famous people in your but phone. But they they've known this man That's what I'm saying. While. He's acting like right. he's brand new instead of having been famous since he was singing for Coke on that bus. This shit will drive you crazy. Insane. When I say this shit, I'm talking about all of this fame and Instagram, of course, social media of shit. Of course it will. And that is why I do the sick and shutting thing because it isn't like if this nigga gets to a place where he hurts himself or somebody else in the joke then everybody's gonna be like there's no money anymore well a bitch it wasn't funny when the nigga was balling i was gonna say right it stopped being funny for me when he hired the the sky essay that's what it was no you know what it was for me let's get it on oh yeah that's what it was that was was creepy as fuck that's when i was like okay i'm done all right i don't Mm -hmm. know what's going on Mm -hmm. in tyrese's head but as you know ridiculous as the first five seconds of baby boy was as funny (laughs) as the rock shit was oh yeah the young jock shit was funny that was good and funny I don't feel like I want something this, bad to happen yeah. to Tyrese or anybody he cares about or whatever. So I'm done with the jokes. But this whole, like I had to mention this $5 million thing because this it is, is nuts. I'm so confused. Right. And so Unless I Unless they were just joking, like, up. what you need? What you want us to give you $5 million? <laughs> Like maybe he was. He was like, yeah, $5 million and I'll stay off of Instagram right. and everybody <laughs> laughed. And then he was like, <laughs> I can't imagine anything else because. He admitted that he hasn't gotten the money yet. Right, right. And uh, it was probably Will calling TMZ like, make sure y'all leak tomorrow that we're not doing it. We are not doing that. Mm-mm. I am legitimately and seriously praying for this brother. And I wish him <sighs> nothing but the mental best. We ain't never going to get the full story because Will and Jada not going to log on to give it to us. I doubt it. They're going to stay logged off in their little rich bubble of... He would have to like turn it around on them and then attack them blacks. next. I mean, for one of them to probably be like, okay, look, this is what we said. It would have to be really bad because they don't do that, especially Will. And even Jada only logs on to be like, uh, the Tupac movie was a lie. It didn't go down <laughs> right? like that. And then exactly. She, go see Girls Trip. And then she's gone. <laughs> Ain't no reason my nigga shouldn't have won a fucking Oscar by now. And that's kind of it. Yep, that's really it. She logs on to make her statements and then she's done. She's like, pieces out. So if she does log on, she'll probably be like, y'all pray for Tyrese. He needs to be in an inpatient facility. Like, he's not doing well. And we wish him the best. Something like that. Because this is sad. Well, that's about it this week for Hot Tops. Breath of the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a break and we'll come back.
This week's episode is being brought to you by Me Undies. Me Undies makes feel good draws that are, are like a kiss on your rose in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> They're seriously scary. very, very, extremely, remarkably comfortable. They are. Um, so good. They're just literally, they just hug you in all of the right places. It's just so sensual in the right way. It is. It's a smooth caress for your genitals. It really is. <laughs> Go to meundies.com slash the read if you'd like to get your personal life. With They've got tons of styles and patterns to choose from if you want to do something, you know, fun and childlike or... Sexy and Netflix and chill. Whatever the mood is that you're in, they've got something to fit your personality. The feeling is unmatched. And for a limited time only, you can check out MeUndies first glow-in-the-dark print. Oh, shit. Called Lights Out mm. for the real freaking you. Okay, well, I don't want to <laughs> keep it PG. Why not update your underwear drawer and glow at the same time? Yes. And if underwear isn't your thing, MeUndies also makes the softest socks on the block so all of your undergarments will be perfect for the winter time. You can get 20% off your meat undies order by going to meatundies.com slash three. It's the best deal on the softest draws and socks with free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee. They've got mine. So if you don't love your meat undies, you can get a full refund. That's meatundies.com slash three. Go hug your butt right. And let's get back to the show. All right. <laughs> That's not my turn. That's your turn. That's your word. So we're back <laughs> to the show. That could stay right there. I don't care. No, it's fine. Uh, it's time for listener letters. All right. There we go. Send your questions to asktheread at gmail.com. We may just read them aloud on the show. Our first question comes from Dominique, who says, first of all, let me just say I absolutely love you guys, et cetera, et cetera, lies. Thank you so much, Dominique. Thank and now you. on to the fuckery. My cousin has a beautiful one-year-old baby girl who I absolutely adore and a baby daddy that I do not care for at all. Ain't that true? They are a Muslim family and that is perfectly fine, but her baby daddy is an idiotic homophobe. Jesus. We have a gay cousin that he continuously calls the F word to his face and behind his back. Wait, 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 wait. This is not his cousin. Uh, No, this is their cousin, her and her sister, her right. and her cousin. Right, okay. They have a cousin who's gay. Okay. And so the husband calls yeah. him faggot, which... Not shocked, but anyway. <laughs> she says, needless to say, I've checked his ass on more than one occasion, but my cousin, who's married to him, continues to take up for him. About a week okay. ago, <laughs> mm. All right. so about a week ago, mm -hmm. I was sent a video of this homophobic baby daddy on Facebook by a girl I have never met. In this video, he is having sex with both a man and a woman. Oh, really? The woman is not my cousin, and they were using a strap on. I know. <laughs> I know it is him because he has very distinct hood tattoos and he has my cousin's name tattooed across you his shoulders. Dummy. Niggas nigga. are dumb. <laughs> they were taking turns getting jiggy with his booty hoe. That's now, right, like they I were. I said, I don't know the girl who sent me this video, but I'm assuming she must know them both since she's friends with them on Facebook. My question is should I give this video to my cousin or just mind my black ass business? Thanks so much. Stay black. Love, Dominique. Mm. <laughs> Bitch, I would have hit share on that shit so fast. <laughs> so fast. Ooh. It's almost not fun when the homophobes end up being gay. It's like, girl, could you be more predictable? I know, but it's also a blast. <laughs> At the same time, it's really satisfying. It it's is. Like, mm, mm. like, you bitches are always so loud. <laughs> you always so loud. Right. Why is that? You couldn't just keep that that internal hatred internal. You had I would to figure let it if out. you wanted to be so hateful and gay at the same time Man. or bisexual, right? That you would be quiet, right? I be mean, silent. How you getting caught up on video camera knowing you got tattoos? What is that about? <laughs> That's some Kevin Hart shit. Where was you at that you wasn't paying no attention to what was going on around you, nigga? I don't do you know get it. that you have tats. Niggas, what would you do? Would you show your cousin the video? <laughs> so so fast. here's the thing, right? No, no, no. Yeah, I'm, ex I'm Yeah. What I would do mm -hmm. is I would hold on to that because it's always greater 
when you mm-hmm. let just a little bit of time just have something in your pocket. You know, that kind of petty is like a fine wine. <laughs> you know, when you just let it sit up there. I mean, some good old hard concrete evidence like that. When you just kind of let it stew just for a yeah, second. let that mature. The moment that you even <laughs> almost imply <laughs> some homophobic shit, I'll be like, hey, bro, come here. Let me talk to you real let quick. Me, let me holler at you. Let me talk to you real quick. So I'm going to hit you with my Olivia Pope shit real quick. <laughs> I'm just going to turn this to you. Okay. And show you what I got a taste of. Double click. Now, <laughs> and then I hit this him with a the, copy. So hit don't him with get that smart. J- Jocelyn Hernandez. If you don't want your business on the blog, then <laughs> stop with your gossip. I would absolutely oh, that's be like. so much more mature than what I would do. I know. You know what I'm saying? Only because. The most evil bastards in the world, I still like to to think twice before I out you. Even though, yeah. here's the thing, I you my doing cousin. It, but, mm. You know what I'm saying? Like a best mm. friend, cousin situation, right. I'm coming to you with that fucking tea. The problem is, my cousin decided that she wanted to <laughs> ally her motherfucking self <laughs> right. with the homophobe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you shit yourself first, because I'm still going to show her. Like, right, I'm no, I'm gonna, show I, her. I have to. That's my fucking cousin. I'm going to show I'm her. I'm going to show her. But what I'm going to do is terrify the fuck out of you first. <laughs> Since you wanted to terrorize my gay cousin, yes. I'm going to terrorize you, bitch. Yes. So I know that you were getting plunged. I'm doing this on behalf of Lamont. Which a dumbass. Right. And I'm going to judge you to your face and ask you what the fuck you were thinking be- being tatted up right. on tape. Mm-hmm. Getting fucked. And I'm not telling because you're doing some gay shit. I'm telling because you cheated on my cousin and how dare you. How fucking dare you. I'm you telling for to- both. I'm not. T- I'm on- the only reason... So if you cheated on my like, cousin with a woman, I would still tell her. I would still I, you tell. would be in the same yes. position. You would be what in the same position. What makes this sweet <laughs> is that you also have the nerve to be a cheating homophobe, cheating right. homosexually. Like, right. And getting pegged. <laughs> what? <laughs> So you're just having verse <laughs> dreams and giving gay nightmares while you're like, God bless okay, it. Okay, so I'm coming to you with the receipts. Woo, I'm I letting you know that you I have your dirt. There are multiple copies. There are fucking flash drives uh, scattered all around the city. So you can think that you can come True. to my house and turn True. some shit up when I'm not at the house or whatever. You're never going to get the last <laughs> copy. I've got it on Dropbox, iCloud, everywhere. There's no like. Right, no. This is, if you so kill me, there's a kill switch ready to go off with a countdown. If you my heartbeat so stops, <laughs> that will immediately upload it to my Vitster. <laughs> It'll be trending on popular before nightfall. <laughs> so try me if you want. See, like, I don't even know what that is. That kind of footage. You don't know what the popular page is on my Vitster? Oh, sorry. I thought popular was a website. I know the popular page on Instagram. The same shit. Okay. So it's just... <laughs> Oh, I get it. <laughs> Whatever. No, I get it now because your porn is super popular. Trending pop. Yes. Trending pop. Got porn. it. Everybody's watching it oh, all so at the same time. Whatever. So. I, I would really want to immediately, I mean immediately tell my cousin. I want to see your face crack first because. I really would be. If I, if, if I told my cousin, I would tell her while he's there because I'm not even going to give Ooh, you. Oh, yes. Because you're not about to be able to lie to her exactly. and spin it in no, no. type of way. I'm be right here to answer all the questions she has even if you want to lie to her i don't know how right. <laughs> with video I mean, evidence saw the video but even if you want to make up whatever it is she could see it for herself and be a wendy williams and be like well i'm standing by my man and both of y'all look stupid that's not going to be satisfying for me right so what i'm a good do is i'm gonna call me and my gay cousin <laughs> yes me and my gay cousin are on. rolling up together and swat just to watch her face crack first Right. And then our cousin can do what she wants with the fucking, with the footage there. Right. That's her business. But. And then I'm watching your marriage crumble. I, oof. Mm. I don't feel bad for you because you have the nerve to be l- allowing this nigga to be a dick to family too. Right. Like, I, you I'm would sorry. never be able, nobody I marry can just come up in my family and talk crazy about any of them niggas I'm can to. Because I'm sorry you got cheated on. Even if I let it rock, the rest of them niggas would not. It's my not going to happen. Crazy. It's not going to happen. My cousin's ex-husband said we were a gang and gave us our own gang sign. He was like, you niggas literally just do not fuck around. Yeah. <laughs> that is how it is. That we is absolutely don't play. how so, it is. Drive by 28 <laughs> 
<laughs> it's not a fucking problem. They really don't. We through. do not fuck around. So At all. The idea of me marrying somebody and this stranger, danger ass nigga coming through and talking shit about somebody I'm blood related to, it just would have never gotten that far. Ever. Not ever. You out ever. your fucking mind. Ever. So yeah, your cousin need to be checked, but her man needs to be. I think it's like a tiny sliver of my heart that feels for him. Because I'm sure, because we do live in a homophobic world, he's been conditioned to be homophobic. And so these conflicting feelings, I feel for him in that way. A big portion of that was my DL story that never happened. DL <laughs> and video. it's never, the DL video is not going to happen. It's, I mean, please. It's been years. But <laughs> it's been like eight years. He's never going to make that video. The point of it, a lot right. of that homophobia comes from projection and this like, this crazy and intense uh, lack of comfort right with your with own yourself, sexuality right. and who you are because people are telling you it's wrong and bad like and usually the people closest to you are the ones who are like well don't bring that gay shit around here you don't know what kind of abuse or kind of like trauma he could have uh, endured just being a young kid and experimenting or somebody mm-hmm. found something and beat him up or like there are all kinds of shit that happens to like very 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 young kids right who are faced with figuring out their sexuality and stuff and having to deal with other ignorances. And yeah. a lot of that leads to this type of behavior. But I'm sorry, nigga, you a grown-ass man. No, right. And you still know right from wrong. Mm-hmm. You in a relationship. Right. You're you know you ain't right for that. Right. You cheat. Period, you cheating. Right. Rid a woman and a man. You know <laughs> right. what I'm saying? So you already wrong for that. Right. But then you're also attacking my cousin, who I'm assuming is open or out. Right. And no, no, doing no. this. That just won't happen. No, I'm flaming you. And you can go and get therapy. Mm. Yeah. And t- Sounds like therapy is what he needs. So good luck to you. Let us know how it goes since we just did one. From- was the video good? Reply. Let us know. Like, <laughs> how yeah? How good was the? How long is it? Ask the cousin. The woman is wearing a can. strap on and she with two dudes. That day, I bet that got freak. I mean, how the fuck are you like? How the fuck are you a bigot on yeah. one end and then super free on the <laughs> other? Like, right. like all kind, like bisexual sex yes. with strap ons and so stuff. So you had a plastic dick in your ass and a real one in your mouth, or was it vice versa? To give Maybe us some all details, of the above. I mean, who knows? It could have just been a triangle of activities going like on. You're so free thinking on this one, this side, and then horrible on this one. Uh, so, since we did a question from a about a homophobic Muslim man, I'm going to do one from a self described black queer Muslim man. His name is Darian. He says, I live in the South. And I've done a pretty good job of building some supportive communities for myself wherever I go. This may seem like a non-issue to some people, but I have a couple of cis white straight guy friends. Can't relate, but okay. Yeah, not many. And they are the sort of straight guys to have almost exclusively queer friends. Oh. Uh, what kind of white man is that? I don't know any. I've those. never met a straight cis white man. I know straight white guys that like like gay guys or like really. Like, you know, like, straight guys who are so, like, metrosexual are so vapid that they just love gay guys I mean, I know lots of them who aren't homophobic and who are, like, totally cool with having gay friends. No, I mean, like, in the sense that they like, like, they like the flirtatious energy of gay guys because it makes them feel fine. But even in a friendship context, they're still flirt. You know what? I'm sure there's still flirtation going on. But I only know white boys like that. Even when I try to have friendships with studs or whatever, it's never, it's never just, it's always. Why would it be? It's always a little slick comment here or there. You'd be like, here we fucking go. Anyway, back to the question. Yes. Circling back. Yep. Normally that's fine, but when it comes to queer spaces, I feel conflicted. This past year has featured numerous fun queer parties or gay bars packed with people, and they are often packed with straight girls having bachelorette parties or these hip straight guys who, for whatever reason, love the attention partying with queers brings them. Wow, you were right. Holy shit. Holy shit. It was right there. Like... Anyway. Wow. These spaces get filled to capacity and people have to be turned away, usually LGBT people, because large groups of straight people want to see a drag show. Right now, my straight (laughs) friend in a new city is texting me about how he can't wait to bring me to fun queer spaces when I visit as if he's one of the girls and he is not. While I appreciate his support, I'm also not sure if it's extra for me to tell him I don't want to go to queer parties with you. You are straight and y'all take up too much space. These spaces are not meant for you. We have these parties specifically to not be around y'all. 
If this well, were New York I mean, City, then it wouldn't be such a big deal. But keep in mind, I spend time in places like North or South Carolina, which have maybe less than 10 you. gay bars got you. in the two states. Less mm, that's than real. I mean, I'm thinking about it in Oklahoma, and it was like the dykes, there's, you know, the gay community there, we didn't really have our own buildings. People would just like rent out different restaurants, exactly. and we would have yep. parties on a certain day, or like every now and then. But it, you had to be in the community to know where the spot was, really. Whereas straight people could throw a rock and hit ten fucking clubs, eight million. <laughs> right, it's Miami so many didn't options. have many either. Surprisingly, wow, that is surprising. It really didn't have that many. It was the same sort of situation. Yeah. So sorry to finish this up. This is also coming after Halloween, where a couple of fun queer parties were spoiled by groups of straight men trying to hit on the women there. I'm bothered by them, it's and we don't have happens. options out here. That is trash. That is another thing That, that is trash. I came here to find me a studsman, and here you go, pressing your dick in my back. <laughs> we need you to leave. Well, I straight niggas come to my parties, too. I mean, this is completely different, but they come to my parties because they know, like, the ratio is, like, oh, yeah. 25 women to one man. That's true. But I think the women at your parties are not opposed to men being— They're like, bitch, I came to have fun. Right, so, they don't— right. If some niggas are there, fine, but it probably won't be. And if they are, they probably just as gay But it's like, it's whatever. Right. So it is what it is. How do I express to my friend that I think it's cool that they feel comfortable hanging out with LGBT people, but I think they need to stay in their lane? Am I wrong for feeling this way? Thanks, Darian. This randomly reminded me of that, <laughs> that Twitter bout the other day when Homegirl said that she was tired of skinny bitches going to the thrift store and buying cl- <laughs> I saw that. big clothes and making <laughs> small clothes out of it. I was like, everyone is livid. Um, I mean, but in the, just like with this story in that one, I could kind of see her point. If you were buying like something that's a size 20 and then repurposing it for your size two ass, it's like, bitch, really a poor girl who wears a size 20 could have did something with that outfit. You know, if it's at the thrift store or whatever. But then people are like, it was probably a size six to begin with. Or yeah, that eight. was so it's like, like she had like a bigger point. I like it just I felt like it, didn't it shouldn't be have been attached to, to that, that girl, tweet. Right. right. But anyway, <laughs> right. Exactly. I can see what you're saying being from where you're you are from or where you're at. Um and those types of parties uh may be few and far between. Um and I'd imagine in cities like that that the venues are probably smaller. smaller. Yeah. Um so yeah, I could see it being frustrated where you're like, you know, <laughs> fifteen solid pieces of trade just walked out or couldn't get in. <laughs> right. Because Gemma's in here. <laughs> <laughs> with her bitches because she's about to get married. Like, why'd you have to come here? So I get it. I've absolutely been to gay parties before and white girls come in and they're, you know, getting wasted and getting lap dances uh. or giving lap dances because they just love being around the gays. And it's like, you know, cool that right. you love us. But maybe I would ask my friend, like, aside from wanting me to feel... Uh, comfortable or have a place to go and party. What are you getting out of being at these types of parties? Right. What do you? What fun do you have here? You know, because it's easy for me to look at a lot of people in these situations. Like I just said about niggas who love, they just like getting off on the fact that men are attracted to them. <laughs> even, even though you would like no... literally never say yes to a dude, you just enjoy being hit on. Yeah. Uh, okay. In the same way that women. It's not that fun. There are a lot of hags that go out to the club. I think they just love being around men that they are attracted to, but don't have to worry about being sexually harassed by. Yeah. yeah. Um, And they can also sexually harass them and not feel like there's any retaliation or let me get your number. Or that I'm teasing you. Yeah. And and if... As somebody who has had this sort of relationship with gay men before, there can be a sort of back and forth fake sexual teasing thing going on. Yeah. But not with strangers that I've never met before in the club. Like, that's just not... I wouldn't act like that with somebody I don't know and haven't already established that kind of, like, fake, to be too super clear, totally fake kind of back and forth shit with. I don't understand why y'all go to clubs and be like... I can just grab gay niggas' dicks. Like, bitch, no, you can't. You cannot do that. Because maybe they want to grab a dick, but you can't go to a straight club and grab a dick well, and expect that he don't think you're going, like, <laughs> we're going home. Bad. You know what I'm saying? That is awful. <laughs> it's too but, bad, like, girl. Th- I agree with you. You don't get to grab gay niggas' dicks either. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I would ask, like, what is, what are you getting out of right. this? Because this is essentially a gay club or a bar for a reason. And most men 
who are coming to this bar are mm-hmm. expecting to be around other gay, bisexual, queer, whatever you want to call yourself, men, right. the community anyway, right. I will say. So you coming there for your own superficial reasons is a bit... To get your ego stroked. Especially if actual queer men, women, whoever, are not able to get in. Right, because the club is at capacity because it's 80% full of straight people. Like, Fuck that's a fool. that, right. So, I mean... I kind of think it's some of this is on the clubs, like, and they want to make money, and maybe they don't really give a fuck who, <laughs> who they the have sexual to orientation of whoever is coming through they the door. They have to pay their bills. <laughs> right. So maybe they're just like, fuck it, you know, we, we'll let bachelorette parties in because we're trying to make this money. But. but there are several, like, lesbian parties here in the city of New York where if you coming in there and you are not a <laughs> lesbian, you have, if you're not a woman, they're just like, no. So, <laughs> like, at the door. Why would you like to? No. This doesn't make any sense. The answer is no. And I always but I have my ID. I don't nigga. give a fuck about your ID, <laughs> no, bitch. You're... You not coming in here. The ID don't matter to me, actually, sir. So. The first, I think I was, maybe the place is called Tao. I had just left a party, gay party, and right next door the girls were popping. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I know this party is lit because I love partying with gay girls. And so I went up to that uh, door and a tall, strapping lady <laughs> told me that I was not permitted to enter the building. Yes! And I said, you know what? That is fair. <laughs> you know what? That reminds me of Gerudo Town. <laughs> Absolutely. And you got to be a V to get in. You are such a <laughs> no nerd <vo>. now. <laughs> That bitch literally had to put on female garments yes. and pretend to be a girl. Because I tried to, to jump the wall the and they sounded the alarm. They were like, like, we will kick your ass. No man allowed, <laughs> bitch. Get out. The fact that they put that into that video game is fantastic. <laughs> that was so funny. Like, all them bitches, we will literally kill you no, if you, you don't cannot, get out. You cannot come in here. That's Sorry. exactly what happened. Woo. So, so yeah. yeah. I mean, I would have a conversation with him because at least he's your friend. And if maybe you could like go one time into a bar with him because y'all are friends and party because at least you know him. But if you're not even comfortable with that, I would have a conversation, get in his head a bit and see what it is that he's even thinking about, why he knows where these places are and why they're so lit yeah. and is so excited to take you there. I mean, can't y'all go to the straight club together if you just really want to go right. to the club so bad? Right. I've suffered through thousands of nights in the straight club with they my friends. So- Boring. Besides oh a strip God. club, like strip clubs are like the only That's straight different. club. I, exactly. Right. But like a regular straight club. Holy God. Oh God, they suck. Do you know what you're doing to your gay friends making them sit through that? Like oh I want to God. die it's in so those boring. things. They are so fucking boring. Oh, no, I'm watching y'all. First, I got to keep an eye on all my friends, make sure don't nothing crazy to happen, happen right. to them. Look at y'all everybody's trying to dodge drinks. niggas and drinks and uh, uh, you just standing there and all of a sudden somebody's dick is literally in your ass cheek. Right. You're like, is this what I came here for? I be at the club with like four girls, and I feel like I always got to keep my eyes on all of them <laughs> right, like, to make sure that no one's being assaulted at any moment. And then if someone is, I got to approach this big nigga being the five eight queen that I am and be like, bruh. <laughs> I'm going to need you to back up chill off. off. And they'd be like, nigga, if you don't sit your motherfucking ass down. Right. So... The strike club is uh, yeah. the pits. But... It is. I mean, can, can y'all do something else? Do y'all have to go <laughs> like, to the club? <laughs> this shit sucks. Let's just go somewhere there else. There are only like a couple of parties like the Everyday Peoples and Grits and Biscuits and Henny Paloozas and Themed stuff. Themed like, like one-off those, events yes, are fine. Those parties usually will go but up. But the straight club? No. No. <laughs> not at all. I'm not doing it. All right. Let me see. Our last question. Ooh. This says, oh, no, I'm sorry. That was eight paragraphs long. I mean, girl, I mean, there's only so much we could do for you. <laughs> you got to keep this a little. You're very not professional. So, well, hmm. This one says I'm in love with my best friend. I have nothing but the <laughs> grace of God's <laughs> word for you, sis. You know what? Let's just write. We've done nothing but gay questions. So let's round it out with another gay man. My name is Jason. I'm 28 years old. I'm writing because I'm in love with my best friend and I do not know how to tell him. Jesus. We've known each other since we were 12. Please don't let him be straight. Through the past 16 years, he's had his boyfriends and I've had mine. All right. Whenever he would call to talk about his troubles with his nigga, I would be there to listen. As hard as it was, I gave him my unbiased opinion because I truly want him to be happy. Of course, he was there to listen to my relationship problems as well. When we would talk about what we want in our ideal nigga, he described things I would do for my dude and vice versa. Our signs are extremely compatible. He's a Gemini and I'm an Aquarius. 
Well, oh boy, I don't know anything about that other than I will never date an Aquarius again. So I've always gotten along really well with them. I clearly do not. <laughs> Two of my worst exes have been. It's born in Leos January. that target me to kill me. See, I can deal <laughs> with Leos. I think because Leo and Virgo are really not that different from each Leo's other. Leos come into my life like this is where it ends. <laughs> Virgos are just it's not, I think, you, as bitch. self-absorbed. Leos are just like, bitch, the whole world is about me. I am the sun. Um, All of you revolve around my existence. It's the circle of life. Like, and it moves. <laughs> <laughs> so sit down. Over the years, we've made playful passes at each other, but it has never gone any further than that. He recently I mean, got well, wait. Out. What is a playful pass? See, I don't... Mm. I'm going to assume that it stops just short of oral. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there could be anything. I mean, so, right. He recently got out of a two and a half year long relationship and I'm eager to tell him how, how I feel as bad as I want to. I can't because I know that he's in a vulnerable state right now. I want to give him time to heal and be there for him in the process. It's eating away at me because I've known that he was the love of my life since we first met. I wouldn't dare tell him until he's healed from his current breakup. I know that I want to be with him, but I don't know how to tell him. I also don't want to scare him off and lose my best friend. So my question is, how do I do it? And have either of you ever fallen in love with a close friend? How did you handle it? I love you guys. Please help. Yikes. P.S. He also listens to the show. So if he figures out that it's me. Then they are. If you're listening, just know that I love you unconditionally. And I wish you could see what's in front of you. Oh. <laughs> I don't have Yikes. a heart, but okay. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, mm-mm. I, that I sounds felt very like nice, that was, though. yeah, I think that was sweet. That, it was. sounded like it was sweet. I'm guessing. So, um, I've definitely, I can't say that I have fallen in love with a close friend, but I have definitely maybe caught feelings or like been a tad infatuated yeah. with close friends before. The thing is, I've never mm. really had, it's hard, but. The few times that that has happened, I've told them. Mm. And how did that go? Well, so for me, that I'm it? still friends with them. Okay, so that's good. Because I, I, I try, I'm helplessly awkward regardless. But I've always approached it like, I just want you to know this, and it doesn't have to be anything. I want to see where your head is at. I'm coming clean with whatever. <laughs> oh. So it's just kind of like, this is what it is for me. And I just want to know how you feel about it. Right. But our friendship is like what is most important for me. Because I feel like even if I'm dating someone, we should be friends. So like <sighs> first and I foremost. I would rather not. <laughs> because like even if we stop dating and we stop speaking to each other, if you have, I feel like if you have the foundation of a friendship, then you should have a mutual respect mm-hmm. of this is where we're at now. Good luck in life. But that's only if the the relationship naturally dissolves and not if one person does the other person wrong or does something fucked up. Because then it's that much harder to go back to being just friends or to ever be friends again. True. But what I'm saying is if you if you did find yourself in a relationship with someone, I think it's better that you have like the trust and camaraderie of a friendship rather than, Oh, this is just someone I find attractive and I don't know or trust this bitch because that just (laughs) followed your whole relationship. (laughs) Anyway, that's neither here nor there. It was just something I got off of my chest and tried to be like real cut and dry about. And yeah, it always ended with like, you know, let's make out. Yeah, like, <laughs> either that or it would just be like, let's just be friends. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's what's most important for me. And that I always, I always like left the situation appreciative of the fact that we just chose to be friends instead. Yeah. Because the thing is, like, once, like, I always got over it. Yeah, you And do. quickly. You get over it. And... I always look back on it and I'm like, bitch, I'm so glad that we just decided to be friends anyway. Because I like us as friends. I appreciate our friendship. And there's a good chance that if we took that leap, I would not be speaking to you anymore. Right. In fact, I would be paying somebody to put curses on you. (laughs) Happens. Blow up your car or some shit. That's so true. So... I think I would just tell him, but definitely not now. Yeah, I wouldn't tell him now because he's all extra in his feelings. And if y'all do start something up right now, it's probably just going to crash and burn. It will. Because he's still dealing with his feelings from this other relationship. Inevitably. So I would I would stick to the the friend role for now. And then maybe they were together for two and a half years. I don't know. So maybe in a year, I would tell him two and a half gay years is 15 years. <laughs> 
dogs and marriage and everything that you didn't. You have a white picket fence and you didn't even really live in a house. You know, it's fucked up that the relationship moves so fast, but the the getting over the breakup doesn't. If if getting that over the breakup just moved trash. just as quickly as the relationship does, I would have been. You know what? Let's not do that. But yeah, I would. I would wait to tell him until he's not so sensitive and all that. But I dated a friend once, and I mean, it was it was cool while we were together, and then it definitely wasn't when we broke up. But we are still friends today, I think, because we did have that foundation of friendship, and it's been years since we right. dated. So right. when I see her, it's like. I don't know. It's almost like we dated. Like, right. <laughs> exactly. Like, what? Me right. and you did that? Why? Like, Absolutely. Huh. So, but good luck to you. I know it must be hard keeping your true feelings to yourself, but just remember that if you get what you want right now, you're not going to have what you want for very long. So just try to hold on to that. Cause that was a, word. a lot of the times niggas be pressing like, ah, I like you, this, 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 we can make it work. Da, 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 zha, 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 zha. And you pushing people to something they're not ready for. And eventually it's going to blow up in your face anyway. So just 1, be patient percent. with his feelings. Let us know how it goes. Send your questions to ask the reader gmail.com and we'll be back. Thanks again to Forum for supporting this week's episode of The Read. The holidays are getting closer every day. And this year, give a gift that's going to say, sis, it is time to get that wig together. No shade. You can help a loved one get closer to their perfect hair care regimen by giving the gift of Form. It was born from a global community of women from all walks of life. And Form is the first and only premium end-to-end system designed to make hair care simpler. I tell y'all about it all the time. I went on their website and did the little consultation quiz got my recommended products and started using them and my hair has really just been flourishing ever since I was at the point where I was so annoyed with it and ready to cut it off and form has just kind of transformed it and made it to where I want to take care of it and just see where it goes from here forms collection of products was designed to complement each other and your process no matter what your needs are Form works every step of the way with no suspect chemicals or formulas in any of their products. Everything from Form is thoroughly vetted to provide top performance without compromising the health of your hair. I love it so much. Once again, I cannot get enough of that spray leave-in conditioner. That shit is actual liquid gold. It is just so perfect. I cannot live without it. So don't wait. Get closer to your perfect hair care regimen by going to formbeauty.com slash the read right now to get 10% off your entire order. That's F-O-R-M beauty.com slash the read. Get your hair together and personal with form. And let's move on. Support for today's show is also coming from Squarespace. We're winding down in the end of the year. So I know loads of y'all have wheels turning in your head about businesses that you've either got running now or you're planning to start for the new year. And with that means you need to have a banging website to showcase all of your work, blog or publish content, sell products and services and all of those things. So go to Squarespace because they will give you the site you need to stand out. You can keep track of your business's growth in real time using Squarespace analytics. And best of all, there's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. If you've ever tried to do some HTML stuff with a website and setting it up, you know it is a hell. It is just demonic. Everything happens safely in the browser with Squarespace. We've both used Squarespace ourselves for our personal websites as well as our website this is theory.com. So we can tell you from experience it is incredibly easy to use. If you have a question though, a problem or concern, Squarespace's award winning 24-7 customer service is always there to help you and you can head to squarespace.com right now for a free trial. When you're ready to launch your new website use offer code READ, that's R-E-A-D to save 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain that's squarespace.com offer code READ the future is coming make it brighter with Squarespace now let's finish the show all right so it's time for the read so I've just got a couple of quick fuck yous to send out um, with minimal details but the point is first of all (laughs) fuck Taylor Swift again and all of her people (laughs) so a blogger for the ACLU, I believe, published a letter that basically was calling out Taylor Swift's being, a, I guess, a sort of... A, a Nazi princess? Yes. They love her. Like... The alt-right is... They're huge fans of Taylor they Swift. They love Taylor Swift, white supremacists, Nazis, everybody else that Mariah Carey be talking about when she's cussing out her security (laughs) people. They publicly live for Taylor Swift. Now, I don't know if this is just a thing that they do just 
to be dicks or funny or right. if they believe everything I believe. I don't know what it is. But they have, like, chosen Taylor Swift. I think that she was in the KKK newspaper or some shit they wrote about her. Probably. Maybe, like, anyway. So this person wrote a story um, saying basically that Taylor Swift should denounce white supremacy and racism to further herself from that movement and talked about the impact that something like that should would make, why pop stars should do it, and essentially use Taylor Swift as an example in this whole thing. So Taylor Swift's legal team sent a cease and desist letter Trish. to the ACLU and this person Trish. Um, saying that they needed to take down this, this letter uh, because it was defamation or some shit. But also, they wanted it to be taken down without it being said publicly, I think, that they sent the letter or something like that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so the ACLU... She's got a lot of nerve. At this... Like, I'm, I, I want to believe that she's just surrounded by shark suit wearing white demons <laughs> that just do all of this mm-hmm. she you know like demon. I want to believe that she just has a team of white people who have Taylor Swift on Google Alerts and anytime her name come up with some negative shit they're just like sending the papers you know I don't know because <laughs> the ACLU certainly like almost immediately was like okay so first of all here's a screenshot, a screenshot. of what these bitches thought that they were going to try with us. <laughs> secondly you may not do this it is against the actual law Um, and thirdly this don't make no damn sense so here's the thing Taylor and again people want to know why I can't when Mm -hmm. people want to know why I can't this is it it's perfect shit like this so your legal team you and your legal team ain't got nothing to say when real life white supremacists (laughs) are calling you their living goddess that's it that's it you have nothing to say then (laughs) but when somebody writes a letter saying that you should say hey people that stuff is wrong right Right. (laughs) now you want to threaten to sue people and the worst part about it is everybody over there had enough sense to be like, you may not sue us. Like, even <laughs> the girl. The ACLU. You're not, you're not. You can't bully us, bitch. The writer was like, I, I think uh, said that. The writer said that he went to, to law school. What? Oh, a man wrote it? <laughs> is it? Hold on. Let me be sure. I don't think it was a blogger for the ACLU, though. I think he just had his own blog in the ACLU. Yes. Up the story. Um, the blog is called. Oh, I lost it. It's not the point. I told you, know, you I had minimal fucking... Uh, Taylor Swift is a bitch with her priorities in the wrong spot is the moral of this story. It really is. How are you more upset over the ACLU and this blogger than the fact that white supremacists like champion your work shit? I just don't understand how you Shouldn't have you be nothing like, uh, to say about I'm gonna that. I'm going to need the KKK to leave my shit alone. Leave me out your... The fact that she won't say that and she wants y'all to stop calling her racist or associating her music with racist people like which is not we're not even doing it we're just pointing out that it happens like right like, nobody racist, is making it up right so no one like, is pulling that shit out of that's the, like, what you worried about as opposed to publicly saying hey white supremacists don't fuck around with my music I don't fuck with that she won't say it because she knows good and damn well where her money comes from exactly <laughs> she knows good and damn well <laughs> like I don't what Ugh, she's on thin ice with me because I still don't know if she used that baby's voice for that gorgeous song. I'm gonna just. I try to. I'm trying to. You know. I try not to think about that. Bring positivity <laughs> in my life these days, and I just because the way I'm gonna cuss that bitch out if she stole that baby's voice. Like you gotta be kidding. No, that I'm just gonna be, maybe at, at at the most she saw that and thought it was Woo. cute and had some other baby do it. You know, and that better be it, bitch. You better not have stole that baby's voice. But we'll talk about the here and now effects going on in the moment, <laughs> and the fact that. The matter is that you really had these white people send in an email to this writer and say that they needed to take down this letter because so are you a white supremacist then like what what is it why why even why even be upset with people questioning this or affiliating you with these people they did it first right i'm so lost how come you didn't send no cease and desist to all the white supremacists talking about uh stop using my shit stop talking about how much you love me I don't rock with y'all and that dumb shit. Like, why aren't you doing that? Why are you instead more worried about the people who are pointing out the dumb shit? Because you're Tyler Swift and this is what you do. So, so a mighty fuck you is going out to her mm-hmm. once 
again. Again. Yep, has to happen. I mean, she's going for a record. Fuck um, Also, a mighty fuck you goes to uh, Janice Brinkley, the judge that sentenced Meek Mill to two to four years. Oh, yeah. I forgot in about prison. That story. <laughs> For violating his probation from a gun and drug uh, case back in 2008. So this is almost 10 years Mm. of probation for this case way back when. They're saying that Meek Mill violated his probation by failing a drug test and allegedly uh, leaving the state of Pennsylvania without approval. Getting arrested. Didn't he get arrested a couple times? Maybe not. Maybe Um, I don't know what I'm talking about. Either way. The fact that you, a black judge, I know many people can easily say, well, you violated your probation and et cetera, et cetera. So you should just, for if you really think that after almost a decade that you fail a drug test probably because you were smoking some weed. I'm just going to go ahead I'm and sure assume. I'm sure it was that, weed. Like, well, I mean, I'm what sure else? It was weed. That... It makes sense to take somebody away from their fucking kid and their family and people they're taking care of for two years minimum, mm. possibly four. Like, that doesn't seem harsh, especially when the fucking district attorney, like the prosecutors, are recommending no jail time. Yeah. Now, what? What? I don't know why that happened either. I, I thought I read some details that said she wanted her cousin has a label and she wanted Meek Mill to sign I was just getting it. Okay, to all right. So his attorney said... That sometime during, I guess, all of this back and forth with Meek Mill in court, right. that she suggested he, he leave. First of all, she wanted him to do a cover of On Bended Knee by Boys to Men uh. and give her a <laughs> shout out for changing his sing. life at what the end mean? of it. What? I don't know. Maybe she wanted him to sample the beat. I don't oh, know what the fuck. Girl. This is what his attorney says that she wanted him to give him give her a shout out at the end of the song, and he refused to do it. Obviously, because that is a dumb idea. Yeah, that's trash. Also, they she showed up to his community service. Um, oh, wow. When he was like, I guess, feeding homeless people or doing something with homeless people. What judges do that? None. She's uh, His attorney also says that she Ooh. wanted him to leave Rock Nation and sign with her cousin and his <laughs> label or whatever, to which he also denied because... I mean, girl, Rock Nation why versus whoever would the fuck y'all are. I do that? <laughs> like, so you want me to go to jail and you want to ruin my career? Like, for, what do you... So you just want me to be... Mm, no. So... I would really like for this to be addressed. There's already a petition that's like well over. Matter of fact, let me see where it was. Because before I left the house, it was like, it went from 40 to 50,000 signatures. I'm sure it's well over that by now. But yeah, this says he got arrested twice this year. So it's kind of, it looks like the sort of thing that you could have been, could have been allowed to just like skate by. And even with everybody else being like, okay, this doesn't, you know, this doesn't warrant jail time. Her own personal feelings about it had her being like, oh, fuck him. He's going to jail. He didn't put my name on the record. I'm annoyed. So, I don't know. Maybe like if judges the prosecutors, shouldn't be able to have this kind of power. If the pros- 92,000 signatures. If the, prog- sir, if the prosecutors are saying, look, he's been relatively good with the requirements for the... Uh, for the probation. Mm-hmm. He's been clean since January or whatever. Like... He smokes some weed, give him an ankle bracelet or extend the pro- or whatever the fuck. I was like, two years in fucking prison. How have you been on probation for almost 10, though? What the fuck is that? I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry. Confused. Like, this to me is absolute bullshit. And I really want to hear more about this fucking story. I hope that they're yeah. going to like, let's hear the judge's this, side of this. Especially after that attorney's claims of her talking about labels, right. and remixes, right. and all of this stuff. Because that, is odd. And I wouldn't be surprised if there are judges looking at these motherfuckers and just being like, they're rap trash and <laughs> right. nobody gives a fuck about you anyway. Nobody's going to challenge me on this. Two to four years. Come on, bro. Like, right. you gotta be out of your motherfucking mind. Past that. I think for, yeah, I think I just looked at it like, I could, I could see a judge being like, nigga, you have come before me too many times and I'm tired of it. You're going to jail. But 
if there's this whole other side of it, like she's like low key a fan and she's upset that you wouldn't put her on or whatever, then it's like, okay, but you don't get to do that. Like you don't get to put people in prison just because they didn't put you on a song or whatever. Like that is fucked up and a gross misuse of your power. I want to hear more about this fucking story. Cause yeah. I can't imagine that a legal representative would go out to media outlets and say, she did this, 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 and that. And I want to figure out why nobody's doing it. I mean, cause she could it. fuck around and, and lose her judgeship. I don't know what it's called, but it seems <laughs> like, it seems like you ought to be dis judged instead of disbarred, disbarred. I don't mean, but, but isn't you, judging is something else I don't know I don't, oh God, exactly. not, I don't, have, I don't even know how no one's that successful in Honestly, my family so. I don't do things <laughs> oh girl last but not least I want to say to whoever lives on my floor um, in this building I came home the other day maybe two days after Halloween and I got off the elevator on my floor. There was like a half, I was going to say half empty, bag of garbage in the hallway, just on the floor by the door to the trash room. And there was a little post-it on it that says, the trash goes in the chute, asshole. And they just left it there. Now, it was not my garbage or my note. (laughs) I kind of like the note. And I double-checked it. I did not. Here's why. Now, I've lived in this building for a year. I've never had, like, an issue with people not throwing the trash into the chute or whatever. But the couple that lives, like, across the hall from me, they have two little girls. When I looked at the bag of trash, there was all these little tiny candy wrappers and stuff in there. Um, I'm assuming, I, I could be wrong. But there's a very good chance that one of those kids went and just left it there because they couldn't reach the chute or they couldn't open it. It was too oh, heavy or something. Okay. And they left it there. Whether or not that was the case, here is my issue. <laughs> You're not going to have nobody looking at me when I'm in the hallway <laughs> like I wrote a note cussing them out over their motherfucking trash. <laughs> And you're also not going to have anybody looking at me like, I bet it was that black bitch that don't know how to throw (laughs) away no motherfucking trash. If you are going to write nasty notes to your neighbors, then make sure that you end it with a dash we're following, followed by your you name are, yes. and your apartment number. <laughs> yes. So if the person whose trash this was feels a type of way about it, they can come address it with you instead of putting playing the guessing game. You don't come on my fucking floor and be posting anonymous nasty fucking notes and having everybody looking at themselves crazy during the wintertime. Because anybody come out in this motherfucking hallway and look at me crooked, <laughs> I'm telling you about yourself. I'm telling you about your mama. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you about your daddy. Dog cat, guinea pig, iguana. Everybody getting cussed out because that ain't got nothing to do with me. Furthermore, if you know there are kids living on this floor, why would you write some nasty cussing and all kind of like, even if it wasn't the kids. (laughs) Even if if it wasn't the kids and they walk past this, mommy, what is this? Like, we all have (laughs) problems. Bitch, if you if it won your trash, you are getting leave so nice there. <laughs> you are so nice now. Like, bitch, are you stupid? <laughs> More than just the kids seeing the curse word. I'm thinking the first thing that came through my my mind when I saw it was this must be a child because a there was little kid candy in there okay. and b not to I mean I eat candy like it's nothing <laughs> but past that it was like a large garbage bag that was half like. Who the fuck wasting glad bags? Somebody, you know what I'm saying? Like, somebody who ain't paying for glad bags. Exactly. <laughs> so the first thing to my mind you was were, this was a your child. Your deductive reasoning kicked in and said a baby did this. But whoever drunk high dumbass wrote that note <laughs> oh, clearly wasn't okay. thinking about that shit. Damn. But more than the kid being affected by it, I'm thinking about me being affected <laughs> by it, bitch. Because if anybody looks at me sideways after that, we have a problem. everybody has a problem. I'm knocking on every fucking door mm-hmm. on this floor and we have asking questions that's real although trash in the hallway is nasty it is too cold it's too cold for that the mice are already trying to come inside let's not give them a reason it is but my trash not being in the hallway (laughs) right is not my you know what I'm saying like I'm worried about my garbage right and that alone if I went into the trash room and there was a garbage bag on the ground I'm thinking well that is just nasty and somebody doesn't have home training (laughs) and then I'm going back inside oh so the bag was in the trash room I thought the bag was outside no the bag was outside right but I highly doubt that they left it in like I I don't think that whoever didn't throw it away or whatever left it in the hallway I'm sure that they left it on the 
ground in the trash room yeah. and the person took it out and put it in a note so that oh, it, you know what I'm so saying they would see it and be like exactly. next time put it down the chute <laughs> and I remember like when I first oh, moved Lord. into the building maybe like a couple of weeks after I first moved in there something similar happened where someone left a nasty note on like the trash room door I don't remember what it was about but it was something similar and I had just moved there I was the only black person on the floor one of the few in the building and so I went I saw uh, the white mom the mother of one of the oh, two yeah. kids oh yeah I remember you telling me about in the that hallway, before. and I said, like, I saw a note on this the door or whatever that was really nasty, and I just wanted to be clear that I know how to throw away things. And she was like, "That was such and such in room or apartment, such and such." You know, like she she was like, "They do this." <laughs> She's just, been a bitch for a long time. It's best to stay out <laughs> of it. It was a guy. Oh, okay. She, he's just like, it's just best. That she, like they have a thing with the other one across the hall. Just <laughs> it's best if you just don't. <laughs> Neighbor trauma. I was like, enough <laughs> say it. Like, I just wanted clarity. Like, right. or That's whatever. Real. So I don't know if it's the same thing, but my whole thing from that is if you're going to do that, it's nothing for me mm-hmm. to have issues with ignorant, inconsiderate neighbors and for me to tell them about themselves. Yeah. But I'm not going to write no whole ass letter and just leave it anonymous. If I'm going to cuss you out, I want you to know I did it, bitch. Because yeah. you can come knock on this door, ring this doorbell anytime. <laughs> me and Lingo me looking at you like, what's up? So Yeah, it's. A, I don't like when people do things anonymously. It's like, put your name behind it so I know who to talk to about this. Exactly. Whichever one of you complained about me smoking weed... <laughs> Just sign your name to it so that I know who you are so we can talk about it or you could just say something to me about it. I saw another happen. I saw another sign in the building, but this was on the first floor in the lobby. And it said, We share the vents in the building, so everything you smoking, I'm smoking. And I was like, Well, well you're my welcome. Building, my, like, my, my lease says I can smoke. So I was like, and just like everybody else's, this is a smoking building. You're you're welcome. So <laughs> that's free. <laughs> If I'm, you got a contact, bitch, I'm I don't understand what contact, you're so. complaining about. Like, <laughs> for smoke on the balcony or go up to the roof. I pay my rent. I'm not doing that. I'm allowed. I can smoke on my balcony if I want to, and I'm still not going to to do that. So My superintendent has been by my my apartment and been like, it smells good in there. So I don't know what you're talking <laughs> I'm about. I'm happy to, to burn some black love incense if you would rather smell that, but the weed is going to get smoked. <laughs> But they didn't put their name on it either. And I'm just like, why? I'm not going to complain to anybody on here and not put my name on it because I'm not worried if I. I think that's white people, man. I do. Absolutely. 1,000%. I think that's white. Niggas be like, and I said, it come see so, me in 15F. That's how we were raised. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what we know. Like, if you have a problem, come and come see and me about see it. Come and see me. So that's just what I know. White people be like, I'm going to go see the super. <laughs> right. I'm going to send an email. We don't even need the super to handle this. That's another way that I get them notices that they ain't got nothing to do with me when a, yeah. the building manager or owner or whatever sends an email <laughs> to everybody like, so such and such and such and such about the building or whatever and throw your trash away and blah, 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 blah. Leave your bikes here. And I'm like, look at you snitching, complaining, <sighs> yeah, bitch. Yeah, that's all people. that is. That's like, that is all that is. I'm putting my name and I'm stamping my door on that bitch as well. Come talk to me if you need to. Yes. And I just, you know, I would like the same courtesy. I only had to do that once because I accidentally opened up somebody's package. <laughs> we have the same first name and our apartment numbers are so like hers is 12F and mine is 15F, something like that. Mm-hmm. So I just glanced at it. I was high. So I just glanced at it real quick and I was like, oh, that's mine. Took it upstairs, opened it. And I was like, why would I order a dog toy? <laughs> <laughs> right. And then I looked at the label again like, oh, oh so I had to write her a note and be like, uh, FedEx didn't open your package from Amazon. It was me. I'm right. very sorry. It's me in 15F. Come see me if you have a problem. Right. But, you know, like, sign your name to the shit you write so that people know who to come to if there's a fucking issue about Something it. Something similar like that happened to me once. People be scared. When somebody got a package of mine, but it was like the building across the street. Oh, wow. And they wow. came and left it in the, the lobby like taped it up and put a note on it that said, <laughs> I opened this by mistake because like it was the same apartment number or whatever Different and whatever. Address, but yeah. they put their name and number on it. Yeah. That's literally what I did. I was like, sis, so sorry. You see, we have the same name. Apartment numbers are really similar. Nothing was open but the packaging. But yeah. I just appreciated the and fact. And I taped it back. Right. I, t- just, I just knew she was going to get that box like, and be like, what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> what these niggas doing in the truck? 
Woo! Just don't do no bitch made ass shit in the buildings you live I in. I agree. Especially if you're going to do it with an attitude. Sit down, ho. Sayane. I don't know if I'm the only black person on my floor, but all the black people I've seen in that building, I think, live with white people. I'm not the only black person on my floor anymore. Mm, that's nice. But back during that first time, I definitely was. And I don't think that the other black person on my floor was the person who did it. I really doubt yeah, it. Yeah, I doubt it. I think it was the same person who did it the first time. Well, adding to the list of quick fuck yous, I want to say one to Jen Shedd, who decided to get on Facebook and do what white women on Facebook do, which is hate on black girls who are amazing. Oh my gosh, their favorite pastime. If you haven't heard of Demetria Obelor, she is um, a news journalist in Dallas, Texas. I believe she does the traffic report, which God bless, because Dallas is one for some horrific traffic. But anyway, she is gorgeous, is the thing. She's ab- Have you seen this girl, Demetria? I'm trying to Google her She now. is absolutely... Be- it looks like she could have very easily made a living being oh, yeah. a video girl. Yeah, <laughs> she decided to go to college instead. Yeah, she's pretty. So, um, Demetria is beautiful. In addition, she's curvy. She looks like Drake's type. Um, well, that's always lovely. Just titties and ass in all the right places, like classic hourglass. And so, when you have a body that is not stick-thin, you can wear the exact same clothes as the stick-thin girls, and yet they look totally different on you right because you filling them out in all these different places right so jen shed which <laughs> i mean right. she looks just as plain as her name is what the fuck kind of name is jan shed <laughs> so jan decided to get on facebook and hate on this incredibly beautiful girl talking about have y'all seen this new Channel 8 traffic reporter. She's a size 16, 18, squeezing into a size 6 dress. <laughs> I understand, you know, Channel 8 is going to be politically correct and bullshit, but I'm not watching this anymore because, you know, they got this gorgeous light-skinned girl with curly hair on their TV station, so fuck that. Oh, no. So, first of all, again, looking at this girl, there's no way she's anybody 16, 18. Depending on height, I would say maybe a 10, 12, possibly a 14 on the bottom because mama got ass and legs. But but that's, first of all, like on the high end of the possibility. And secondly, even if she was a 16, 18, if she was squeezing into a size six bitch, she would not look this good in it. I don't know if you've seen some of her other pictures, but mama is fine. Look at her. Like... She's ridiculous. A veritable fine apple. Like, nobody's ever been more gorgeous. And so, of course, the internet is obsessed with Demetria. And once once black girls saw these comments on Demetria's page, it was over with. Chance the Rapper ended up retweeting it. Even Megan McCain's hating ass piped up and said something about body shaming. Really? Even Megan McCain. You know, she likes to play. She likes mm-hmm. to toe the line. Like, all girls. Yeah. <laughs> girls matter. But... At the same time. Whatever, I'll keep her getting yeah. invites sure, to places. Sure, so you can be on The View. Right. Fine, Megan. What the fuck Okay, ever. sure. But shout out to Demetria. She released this video of her being fine at home in a Kansas sweatshirt, hair up, and like a hot... Looking very Frannish, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> looking like she, she was about to do an aloe treatment. Yeah. And she decided to just address this real quick and say, you know, if you don't like it... She didn't say watch another channel, but she was like, I'm not going nowhere, so do with that what you will. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you to everybody who has just been showing so much love. We need to shatter all of the bullshit and embrace every body type, every color, every hairstyle, et cetera, et cetera. So shout out to Demetria, to Demetria for being dope, gorgeous, and amazing, talented black girl who is turning all of the racists in Dallas, Texas, absolutely sick and getting niggas worldwide extremely horny. Because once again, she is fine and has body for days. I'm not going anywhere to so do with that. What you will is really like the blackest bottom line there is. <laughs> and she said, what like, else she said, there? I'm on TV, so I can't always clap back like I want to clap back. Right. <laughs> and I'm not sure was, I wanted to say, Jan, you miserable mayonnaise looking ass bitch. Right. <laughs> it's not my fault. You look spoiled and I'm fresh and brand new, bitch. Exactly. You're mad because I'm gorgeous. So yeah, shout out to Demetria and yes, girl, we will always have your back against these hating ass white women. And speaking of hating ass, these people aren't even white, but people hating on niggas. A coffee shop in Brooklyn got in trouble on Halloween. I know they did it. Because you know, so if you don't, actually if you don't know, in New York City, trick-or-treating is weird because nobody lives in houses. Exactly. I just had this conversation (laughs) with my mama. It's so weird because, and kids 
don't walk around apartment buildings no. and knock on doors either. They just dress go up and store. go outside. <laughs> yeah. right? And stores voluntarily participate in trick or treat. They have a bowl of candy or whatever. Give it to the kids. I was just talking to this. It is my mama. so weird. She was cracking <laughs> every up. Halloween. I'm like, what? <laughs> I was in Blue Mercury just shopping and kids coming in every 30 seconds, trick or treat. And I was like, so at the skincare products? I left the gym on Halloween and my mama called me on FaceTime and she was like, why you look so miserable? And I'm like, because all of these kids are on the street and I'm just trying to get home and never leave. She's like, on the street for what? Because they don't have houses to go trick or treating. <laughs> she was dying. She's like, I didn't think why? about that. What the hell? Yeah. I was like, yes, they go into the barber shop and CVS or wherever else. They do. They go open. everywhere and get their little candy or whatever. It's a New York City thing. It's Everybody, just, plenty of businesses don't participate. They have signs up that say no candy, don't none, ask. Don't right. come in here. So, you know, like the doors open or whatever, it's fine. It's a thing. It's the city. Fine. So this well, coffee like shop in Brooklyn had a sign on the window that said oh, tricks for some treats for others oh, God. with a little drawing of a pumpkin and so um it just so happened that a couple of people were in the cafe during um halloween mm-hmm. their names are oma holloway and michael catlin they are members of community board three the local community board they stopped in for tea and coffee and said they were waiting when they saw the cafe worker turn away three different sets of black children in costumes out trick-or-treating with adults they said the kids weren't being crazy they weren't running in like bitch where the candy at right. you know they just walked in trick-or-treat and the guy was like oh you know we don't have anything fine you move on to the next store that's all well and good. Three different sets of black kids came in. The moment two white kids with an older white woman walked in, the man pulled out a glass of cookies, a big ass jar of individually wrapped cookies, and was like, Here you go. Happy Halloween. Da da da. So you didn't have nothing for all these black kids who came through. And nigga, you're in Bed Stuy, by the way. Like, this is not right. just Brooklyn. Like, this is literally on Nostrand F. Right. So. Three sets of black kids came in here trick or treating. You didn't have shit for them. As soon as white kids come in, all of a sudden you got a glass jar full of goodies. So it is just pure. It is just a pure stroke of luck that these community members were there because as soon as they saw it, these board members they were like, "Uh, what the fuck?" So they called him out in person, and he tried to apologize, but you know it's way too late in the age of social media. Niggas is not having none of this. They went online and told everybody about it, and before I think it had to be within hours because I think I first heard this story that same night or maybe the very next day the owner first started trying to defend the cafe on yelp you know with because because that's mean, the first thing gonna go, niggas right. was going on yelp like one star no, racist don't in the it. middle of bed style and don't give candy to black kids the fuck is this bitch don't let me tell you about how trash so then they updated again and gave um another they gave a press release this time on facebook and the owner was like, you know, I just want to apologize. I want to make sure everybody knows that I wasn't there. The manager was on sick leave. This guy is brand new. He's only 18. Oh, girl. He's new to the country. He's only been an employee for 10 days. And this is no excuse, da 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 He's and I'm thinking, okay, the- so you're new to the country. You're clearly still anti-black. You don't even have to be. I don't know that he's white. It sounds like he isn't. But there are lots of people of color who hate black people. Many. So. The owner goes on to say, I would like to clarify that myself. I'm an Asian and brown who was raised in this country with multiculture. And I believe in equivalent freedom of rights for every single human being. My nigga, what is an Asian and brown? What is that? I'm an Asian and brown. What? I mean. Are you mixed with Asian and brown? Are you I calling mean, your skin color brown? I think that like when when you say when I know a lot of people who just call themselves brown who are from parts of Asia Woo. that would you know what I saying? don't mm-mm, no that doesn't make any sense I just, is, and I, it sounds like you're using your Asian-ness and your brownness whatever brown wherever your brown may come from as some sort of the Strand Cafe would never be racist we right. would never do anything I like mean that's that the because, point right because I'm a person of color also but like I just said it's plenty of people of color who don't fuck with black people and the fact that you had an 18 year old brand new employee working by himself on a holiday anyway seems suspect nobody thought uh, maybe the nigga who just got here shouldn't be working alone on a but, day where right. things are different you yeah. know it's not regular standard protocol but again you don't have to be in America for years or have you don't have to you know have spent a decade as a 
a coffee shop nigga or whatever to be racist. You can just be racist. There's exactly. And the fact that we watched you deny black kids, like the community board members, people Saw who don't you. have a reason to lie, exactly. watched you do this and then just gleefully handing out candy and shit to white kids. It's just like, you are in Brooklyn though. Like y'all come to the neighborhoods where niggas have been for years, decades, because y'all didn't want to be there no more. And now all of a sudden you coming in, y'all got a little bit of money. The rent is cheaper over here. So you opening up businesses and shit. And you think you can shit on black people while making money off of them at the same time. So shout out to bed Niggas is organizing a boycott, you know, fuck strand cafe. We can have a cure rig at home. Oh, we ain't got to go there to get our coffee. Don't, don't try to use the shit out of black people and then be like, oh, I'm sorry that we're so racist. Like, I'm sorry that we denied your kids a little bit of joy on a holiday. <laughs> like, that is all about kids having joy. Like, you got to be a cold hearted motherfucker I say to that. deny like, kids some shit on. Even I smiled on Halloween. I did seeing all them kids in their costumes because most of them were fucking adorable. A lot of them were. One really of them was a cute. hot dog. I was like, I want to be the, the child who was like. Bust out the hot dog costume. <laughs> Fuck them princesses and shit. Give a I bitch some to relish. Be a Nathan's <laughs> bitch. Like, that is what I've been thinking about. They were adorable. And had I had a bucket of candy and it wouldn't have been totally creepy to be just I a stranger. I bought candy just in case. I mean, just in case. But I, I haven't seen very many children in my building, but I just have never had anybody knock on the door before either. So I was just like, I mean, push come to shove, I can always eat this. My dad I did. That's what I did. But, you got it's got to be something. The racism in you got to be deep to deny children, children, some free fucking cookies and shit on Halloween. On Halloween, like what Wayne. the fuck kind of bitch are you? Apparently, he's already been fired, so yeah. that's good. Yeah. But it's still just it's trash, and I racism gets on my nerves regardless. But when you do it to kids, it's like for on what, Halloween. Man? Like that, that's what they're you dressed do today. up as little whatever the fucks and goblins it just, and like that, it's, frozen. It's that, and you know what? If you didn't want to give out candy, you could have just been like, "We ain't got no more." To everybody, to all of or them, or put up a sign in the window: "Ain't no candy, ain't no cookies, ain't no trick or treat." So you specifically you want went out of your to way, only give right? These to white right. Kids. So fuck these niggas, bitch. <sighs> and it ain't like it ain't plenty of fucking coffee shops all throughout motherfucking okay, Brooklyn. Okay, but Bed-Stuy this is how y'all want to act. But you want to come to black neighborhoods and act like you can like right. ignore the people that have been there this whole time. You too good for our kids. For time. our kids though, like this the community that lives around here is the reason you have a business. Why people not coming in from Manhattan or whatever to buy coffee at this shop? Like get your ass out. <sighs> Trash. Leave black people the fuck alone. Do that. Well and I'm done. That wraps up this week's episode of The Read. Mm-hmm. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr at This Is The Read. And check out our website, of course, this is the read.com. Um, So uh, this weekend, we will be in Charlotte, Yay! North Carolina. It's happening. Um, We will be having a pop-up shop. Uh, on Saturday from 1 to 4 at the Queen City Ballroom. I'm sure you can go to the uh, Read Instagram. This is the Read to get more information on when and where all that is happening. So if you want some merch, you can pop up at the pop-up before the show and grab what you want. LA will also be having a pop-up shop for you guys and we get out there next weekish or whenever that yeah. is. November 18th. We'll be having our pop-up shop from 12 to 6 on Fairfax. So you can do the same if you want to grab some merch. That will be the time for you to do so. Yes. Thank you so much to Spotify for spotlighting the read and promoting us on your platform. We appreciate the good look. Uh, Also, thank you to Amanda Seals for having me at Smart, Funny, and Black last night with Bevy Smith. I lost. I saw the pictures. I was like, what? Bevy's wearing the crown. What happened? Bevy fucking earned it. <laughs> that bitch was hel- like nonstop funny. I knew she had a mouth on her, but I was literally dying. Oh, wow. She's hilarious. Cool, cool So that cool. was a lot of fun. Shout out to Yamanika who beat Charlemagne as well. <laughs> saw that coming. Speaking of your last read, actually, I heard that like for one of the segments, 
uh, it's called like the final black destination. And it's like, oh my God, name like three <laughs> things that you would do in the future. And it's like uh, connected to blackness or the black experience somehow. So theirs was something like three laws that you would put in place in the future. And one of Yamanika's Amanda told me okay. was that um, if white people can move into my neighborhood, I can move into theirs. <laughs> so yes. I, I got my life from that. <laughs> and I see why you are the winner. Uh, so yes, thanks so much to her for having me at the show, Amanda, and for creating the space. It was a lot of fun. I had a really great time. For Sounds like big out. fun. Um, past that. I think that's it for me. Do you have any other news or announcements this week? Oh, wait, I have something for you. What? Almost forgot about it. I don't know what you're talking about. No, I have like a a present for you. (laughs) Well, it's not for you. It's for Link. Oh, that's fine. (laughs) It was on Oprah's favorite things. Of course it was. It's something to keep her from not being... I know you said you have to sometimes put her in front of the TV and so she gets mad because she's tired of Housewives yes. reunions or whatever. So that is oh something that is designed to keep your dog entertained and active while go you go bone. do other things. Yeah, The app-controlled smart bone for dogs automatically keep your dog entertained while you're busy and open up a whole new world of play when you're together. You know the funny thing is, maybe two days ago, if not less... I was thinking, I was playing with her, and I was like, we need a new toy. Like, I have to Google <laughs> whatever the fancy electronic toy is that will keep you busy because she's not. How crazy. Stop. She plays That's for an hour straight, again. naps for 20 minutes, and is like, I'm back. Like, <laughs> more. Let's just get it a short break. And I'm like, well, bitch, I need one now. Like, I was playing, too. That's what the Thank owner you. said, that, like, he was spending so much time with his dog, and then he had to start writing a book or whatever. And the dog was like, well, listen, bitch, no, I I'm, still want to play. I'm not finished. I figured if it's good enough for Oprah's dogs, it's good enough for Link. I mean, so. Link definitely thinks that she's one of Oprah's <laughs> fucking dogs. So I hope she enjoys it. Yay. You can stop showing her. She's sick as looking at Nene. She don't want to see no more yes. Phaedra. She was like, okay, so they're married to medicine. What, like, can we get back to oh, throwing things? Now that's my show. Did Isn't you see it, it this so week? so good? Okay, so let's just talk about married to medicine. Let's so just, good. We could escape Real house. Fuck lives. Curtis. Fuck Toya How Dumbass. dare you? And I, I saw a divorce coming, but nigga, really? Like, are you fucking serious? You gonna step out on Dr. Jackie and Angelic After ass? all the shit that she has been through? She gave up having kids. She gave up getting a cute little apartment in the city and all this so Survived that you could go be an old man. Okay? And you gonna do Dr. Jackie like this? Are nigga? you stupid? Oh, uh-uh. And then Toya Dumbass, I'm sorry. It's just my job to be everything to my man. Him. I just have to cater to him and and just make sure his dick is sucked as soon as he walked through the door. Yeah, Jackie you. got into that interview and said, <laughs> Toya's job is to be her husband's everything yes. because everything she has comes from her husband. Mm, yes. And I was like, Jacqueline, this is why. Like, <laughs> but see, I'm a self-sufficient ass bitch. So I can do whatever the fuck I want to. And it's not like Dr. Jackie hadn't. We saw them. It's been five seasons of this show. Like we have watched Dr. Jackie try. Try. Try to keep Curtis's old ornery ass happy after being on her feet and saving literal lives all, all motherfucking day. day and delivering babies or whatever the right. fuck right she else. all up in pussy all day she and then she still, come home and try to take care of you too in a little dress with uh, yes. oven mitts on and like here taking I am taking care of this herself this is for you clearly this, still exercising and everything meanwhile clearly. you're just over here literally being a bump on the log a bump on a and log and he's happy being old and just like sitting there and not doing shit else with his life but Jackie is like bitch I didn't work too hard like let me have some fun. She gave up having kids, man. And she regrets it. You could tell the way she was talking about it. Absolutely. She was like, I That's didn't have children thing. because he was so... That's been a like, thing on like a few seasons. And now it's too late. And so... And this is what you do to her. that. Like, I want to fight Curtis. Fuck that. Fuck Curtis. I hope and then I they had that old raggedy ass party in that hotel room or whatever. <laughs> and spent the majority Next. of it sitting and arguing about what they would do if they right. were in the situation. I'm sitting here like, this woman is literally Simone is the only one with sense. Quad and Toya. T- you'll never be able to, to step out on me and cheat on me in the streets. Because I done gone to jail. And, and I done she was so right when she was like, you really do not know what you'll do exactly. until you have to go through it. It's so true. So in the kindest the way, fuck out. she was like, if each and every one of y'all don't shut the fuck up <laughs> and 
and just give me the French fries. <laughs> like, that's all. I just wanted to come here and drink vodka, eat ice cream, talk shit about men, and then go home tomorrow. Go pick out my loft in downtown Atlanta and go get my fucking groove back. Jackie deserves so much better than Curtis's old boring, whack ass. If you don't send home the Magic Malik squad... <laughs> What? The Who are these Malik stripper squad. niggas? Get them out. What? <laughs> it is something wrong with Heavenly. you. Heavenly. Like, absolutely not. And blackish. <sighs> now, I have been waiting on this episode. They absolutely did not disappoint. The whole, the scene that really got me was like when all the women in the family came together. Thank you. And they're like. So this would have been the third we'll episode that I've it. cried on during this season. <laughs> I think the only reason I didn't cry is because I was eating at the same time. So half of my mind. <laughs> Half of my mind was kind of dedicated to the food. And so I was like a little distracted. But that moment where they all came into the room and sat around her and was like, you know, women. Yeah. And it's just life. some shit that we go through, girl. And here. And Mama bled like, on a white couch. <laughs> they all had these different perspectives that even I as a man could just be like, I know that this is a story. Like mm-hmm. each one of these things is for someone. Yeah. And I got choked up, but then my chicken was still there. So I was <laughs> so like, like so I didn't bring actually, it back down. Bring it back down. <laughs> but I definitely weeped on the first episode this season. Oh, yeah. That one was and a real heart jerker. The uh, postpartum episode, I cried like Yeah, that one was, the the postpartum was so much. What so a She good had show. to cuss Ruby out or kick Ruby out the house. I was, you know, that had to happen. like, that was an acting ass yes. scene. Give Tracy her things, God damn it! And the contrast between the kids, how, like, Diane is, like, stressing out over growing up. Right. And... Jack is like dying to grow up. <laughs> right. Like he's like boys, I'm shorter than her. <laughs> like really be like ready to rush into adulthood. And girls are like I'm growing up and this like I garbage. have breasts now. And boys are looking at me different. And what is this? I just feel like we're taught to dread starting our periods because everybody's like, well, girl, that's the beginning of the end. Right. So you get your period and you're like, fuck this. <laughs> Put it, put it back, put it back. I did all kind of stuff. But she said, "Ain't nobody got time for you to make a friend, Rainbow." <laughs> like she was dragging her mama and daddy all episode long. They made her wear them big ass pants out of lost and found. <laughs> so this is too real, shit. <laughs> She was putting oh. them sheets in the fucking washing machine, and then yes, Jack's like, "No night. dad's gonna come out the room." You know what's going on. Get out of her goddamn face. <laughs> He uh, was so excited to be musty. He was so excited to be musty. Like, he was like, yes, deodorant. And when his g- fucking granddaddy said, and not the all natural kind. <laughs> Don't get to get you chemicals. Need, <laughs> he said, kill them. Kill that funk dead. <laughs> that line killed me. And when Ruby was Woo. talking to uh, her daughter, that flashback. Oh, and yes. she talked about her period. <laughs> she, <laughs> yes. <laughs> she ended it talking about, you want some of this wild turkey? I, I said wild turkey. Died. Jennifer Lewis is an actual diamond. An actual gift. <laughs> I pre-ordered three copies of oh, the book. I cannot. I wait. can't wait for them to get it. I just wanted to say, you all deserve quality all of television. It. Quality Fantastic television going on. Black television. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll see you next week. 